I know a lot of you are expecting a recycled review live thing tonight. Well, the weather forecast didn't look great. Frustratingly, it's perfectly calm and dry outside right now, but that wasn't the forecast. Unfortunately, that's been postponed. But welcome to a regular VPUB instead. <laughs> Hello, whiskey folk. Welcome. Welcome to Thursday. Welcome to another night for a wee V-pub. Like I say, I should have been... The plan was for me to be sitting out in the driveway and throwing um, incidental bottles that I've been collecting over recent months into the bin and giving them a wee bit of a resume before they ended up being recycled. That was my plan, to have a bit of a recycled review. There's only two V-pubs left tonight and one a week from now before the summer break, and I wanted to squeeze that in. Yesterday's weather forecast was to be dry all day and then rain in the afternoon and the evening, and that was exactly right. In fact, the rain was so bad last night that I had a problem with uh, the car alarm, and I was up till three o'clock in the morning trying to sort it out. Today, the, the weather forecast was the exact same, and I decided to trust it. And I said, okay, I need to pull a parachute. I don't want to be sitting out in the driveway under a flimsy gazebo with all the electronics and the lights and things like that. <laughs> As, this, as the rain comes down, or worse, if the wind and rain was to happen at the same time. Frustratingly, the forecast today was a wee bit wrong, and it's actually quite calm outside. It might rain yet, but it's dry right now, so maybe I could have got away with it, but I didn't have the courage to go ahead with it, so I'll need to postpone recycled reviews live until another night. Regardless, I reached out to the community. I reached out inside Patreon, and I said, look, if anybody's got uh, some other inspiration for a topic, um, because the, the, the topics that I had at short notice, let's say, were, were fairly... It wasn't that they were weak, it was more a case of that I hadn't prepared enough. So I needed something that I could do at quite short notice. And Malcolm Douglas came in with a great idea to talk about uh, remarkable whiskies or whiskies that have struck him as uh, good whiskies so far in 2020. And for me, that was easy and I thought it was a good idea. There's been quite a few remarkable whiskies for me this year. And by remarkable, I'm not just talking about fantastic whiskies. I'm not just talking about epiphany whiskies or uh, contenders for whiskey of the year or nonsense like that. I'm actually just talking about whiskies that have made me stop and think about a specific thing. Good, bad, and indifferent, honestly. And I'll go through a few of them tonight. Being a being a, a show that kind of focuses on evangelism and positivity, I'm not going to dwell too much on the negative side, of course. But I want to point out a couple of things that continue to frustrate. And I'm sure um, you guys will also have your own opinions. You'll also have your own remarkable whiskies that maybe you want to chime in and share with us all and uh, I'll try and keep my eye on the chat as it streams past. We're going to have a wee game of Is It A Space Side as well. It's been a few weeks since we've done that, uh, and I've got three folk from the community, two people coming back for a bit of a uh, another go again, let's say. They want another go at it, perhaps because they never managed last time, and uh, somebody new coming in as well. So I'm looking forward to having a wee game of Is It A Space Side, and then we can talk about... Um, Remarkable whiskies. I couldn't. I couldn't come up with a better word. I couldn't come up with a more appropriate word. So remarkable whiskies it is. Let's jump into the chat. Let's jump into the lounge and welcome some of you fantastic, eh, beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. Lots of orange. Lots of people saying hello and uh, asking me how I am. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. Only two V pubs left. I'm kind of looking forward to the break. I'm looking forward to taking a wee bit of time off, but I know what happens every single year in the summer break. I'm not even a couple of days in and I start missing everybody. It's going to happen again. Um, but there's a couple of things to do before then, so let's make the most of it while we can. Okay, I've got the chat up now. Steve is, and always fantastic to have your support, Steve. Thank you so much for everything you've been doing in the moderators uh in terms of the moderation and helping out in the chat this year, along with McAllen Fine and Rare, Alistair Gray, Whiskey Jason, of course, um, my friend the Whiskey Rev, and people that drop in from time to time just to help 
tidy up the comments and keep it clean and things like that. I have to say our community is superb, positive, fantastic. There's very little, very little to tidy up, so to speak, um, but they often help me with a definition and they help me uh, pick out comments and things that I should really be reading out and I often miss. So thanks, Steve, and thanks to all my moderators. Pete Head Frank is here. Good to see you here. Good to see you too, Frank. Wonderful to see you. Uh, Bill Balistreri is in saying hello, everyone. Evening, Roy. Good to have you, Bill. Uh, Gabriel Welding is here. Wonderful stuff, Gabriel. Nice to have you joining us. Eric Cunliffe is in. Good to see you, my friend. Wonderful to have you. He's saying you're looking well rested despite the unintentional concert you had to endure last night. I hope you and the family are well and there's a great dram in the glass. There is a very good, a remarkable uh, dram in the glass, uh, honestly speaking, Eric. It is a good one. And I'll touch upon that in a wee minute. Hell's Widdy saying, Evening, Roy. Hope all is well with you and the missus and your car. Aye, it's been uh, my alarm went off last night because of the rain. It turns out that water has got on the inside of the car somehow. It's managed to work its way down the inside of the door through uh, a wiring harness and it's upset one of the sensors. So the door thinks that it's open and I can't close that door hard enough. It just, the car does just doesn't want to accept that the door is closed. Um, so we reset it. And uh, every few minutes, the alarm goes off again, and we're, we're not sleeping. My neighbours aren't sleeping. Frustratingly, one of the features of the alarm on that car is to play the stereo obnoxiously and loud. Um, yes, and some people have been suggesting, why didn't you just disconnect the battery? Um, it's an electric car. If anybody can tell me how to disconnect the battery on an electric car, you're welcome to do so. In the end, uh, the only solution, believe it or not, was for it to be towed away. So uh, it was towed away from the driveway last night because of water ingress. Don't know how it happened. Potentially me, my wife, my children, leaving the door open for a wee while during one of the downpours that we've had. Um, but I, I was low on sleep last night, but I caught up this evening. I had a wee sneaky nap before the V-pub. Shane Lay is in saying, evening, sir. Good to have you, Shane. Um, Lee Hosey is in. Fantastic, Lee. Always great to see you. Daniel Vermas, Jimmy Legg, Graham Horner. Graham Fraser, Falsgraf, wonderful to have you guys. Nicholas Burt from the States, always great to see you. And Nicholas, uh, Lee J. Brown, Pete Head, uh, you can do the throwing, he's saying. Uh, uh, throwing, what was I talking about throwing, Frank? Marcus Kreitner is here. Good to have you, Marcus. I hope Christina is sitting next to you and I hope you're comfortable. Uh, Floyd Rodriguez is here. Always great to have you in, Floyd. Wonderful to welcome you again. Um, Cresmere is here, good to have you Cresmere is saying Aquaviti no, no summer break <laughs> no summer break um, I always said that if I was going to make a regular thing out of the live streams I said it when I started back in 2017 that I would always kind of uh, put in a wee bit of a downtime during the summer I think it's good to re-energise and just have a break and have a rethink and what tends to happen is I come back with a wee bit of a a rejig and kind of an upgrade or uh, of some description and uh, hopefully you guys get the benefit out of it as well. A wee bit of a break from having to listen to me. Alan McLaughlin is saying, evening Roy, good to have you. Alan, Jimmy Legg is here. Wonderful stuff, Jimmy. Always great to see you. And Ebhead is here. Wonderful to see you, Rolf, as well. I hope you're doing well over in, uh, in, over in Norway. Uh, David Evans is saying, the Mortlack car more was pretty impressive. That's an interesting one. I have it. Um, I did enjoy it. Actually, it's not one of the ones I picked and brought through, but I did enjoy that, a good uh, representation. Um, I think that it would have been nicer, a heavier ABV. Mortlack is quite a, it's quite a big thing, and I think that the ability to have the extra ABV to play with, put a wee bit of water, bring it down step by step, but that was a good one. Jonathan Flowers is, is here. He's saying made it for a second. Jonathan, I believe you might be skiving right now. Wonderful to have you, my friend. I uh, hope you're not working too hard. Gino is in as well. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Gino. And Helen is mentioning our big black. I've got a wee comment here from you, Helen. I, I printed off the, the comments that's come in uh, from Patreon. I know that some have come in on email as well. I was running out of time. I didn't get them all printed off. And I'll, I'll try and share a few of these throughout the night. So it's not just all about my remarkable whiskies. It's it's you guys as well, the things that have struck you. And it's kind of less, I hope, to do with uh, whiskies that, you know, I'm recommending that people go out and try or buy or anything. It's not what it's about because I think that you'll notice the channel has to focus on whiskies most of the time that everybody can buy 
and share. There's no point in me uh, evangelising about a 118 bottle release from a single cask that nobody's can get their hands on. Um, you know, there's limited mileage in that. I, I'm not suggesting that I won't talk about it, but I tend to lean towards things that other people can get their hands on. That's kind of what I try to do anyway. But tonight, I've kind of given myself a break from that. Tonight, I'm talking about whiskies that have struck me, and it's less to do with the whiskey, I think, and maybe more to do with the reason why. Skogsmar the series saying, bit the bullet uh, on a bottle of Bunahav and Moynya, and he's saying, fantastic. Wonderful stuff. I wonder which one it is. Skogsmar, is it just a standard Moynya? Um, I do love it. The Moynya Oloroso is a, an all-time classic, a favourite of mine. Uh, thanks to the doc in Germany, McAllen Fine and Rare, I managed to get uh, another bottle of that uh, very recently, and it's sitting there. It'll stay sealed for a long time, because I'm not sure when the next official release will come out of Bunahaven. And if it does come out, I wonder what price it's going to be at. And that's a subject I'm going to talk about a wee bit tonight as well. We all like to have a whinge about price, don't we? But honestly, the prices that are coming out just now are starting to take the piss. It's gone beyond. Everybody is in this race to charge what the market will stand, and they're all kind of giving each other the confidence to charge more and more each time. I don't want to deny anybody the ability to run a successful business and make profit. And I understand that there's lots of cases where the stock itself is becoming more precious and more and more expensive. I understand it's probably becoming more challenging for, let's say, independent bottlers and things like that. But I have to say, it's difficult for me because I want to stay positive. I want to evangelize about whiskey. And it, I want it to be a positive community and a positive experience sharing where the good stuff is. And the producers are making it harder, honestly, because the prices are climbing. They've always been climbing. Potentially, they always will climb. But there's a couple of whiskies here that I'll make a point about that a wee bit later as well. Something else for us to think about and something else, honestly, for producers to think about as well. Carry on with your pricing, but understand that we'll carry on with our decisions and it might not be the decisions that we made previously. Simply based on price, honestly. Caravan Wallingham is in saying, hi there, Roy, good to see you, Carl. And Mashburn is saying, where is the giant coin? Good to, I was waiting. I was hoping to see Mark Goins and is Mark here tonight? You might remember uh, when we were playing uh, Is It A Space Side with Mark a few weeks back. He was on and he picked up this uh, this coin. I'm looking for a, a VPUB compass coin. Um, I've got one in the drawer, haven't I? So here we have on the back of us a batch two coin from me. On the back we have the VPUB compass. You'll see it on all the thumbnails. Sometimes you'll see it up here in the corner, but recently it's been the bar fly that's been up there. Um, and Mark, about six or eight months ago, asked me for the artwork for this, and I wondered why. So I sent him some high-res artwork for it across, wondering what he would do with it, and then completely forgot about it. I, I, I wasn't really sure what he was up to. Maybe making a wee t-shirt or something like that. I wasn't sure. A wee bit precious about the branding and the logo. Um, you know, I'd, but it's when it's going out to folk that I know and things, I'm okay with it. I gave it to Mark anyway to, to, to see what he was going to come up with. I could not have imagined uh, what he came up with. If you were there that night, you'll remember what he presented we with, we, me with. I'm going to try and pick this up. It weighs an absolute ton. Um, this is the biggest whiskey challenge coin you've ever seen in your life, and it's going to command a complete rejig of the VPUB. Believe me, look at this thing. <laughs> is that not just a thing of a beauty? Can you see it's it's carved out? These are these are all in these are three dimensional letters. The whole thing has been carved, so we've got this big solid beechwood being painted black, and then the the VPUB compass and the messaging and things, it's not whiskey until it's shared, has been carved out of it. I absolutely love this thing. I think it's an amazing thing, an amazing gesture. Yet another example of just how amazing the community is that we have. And I will find a way um, to do this fantastic thing justice. Um, but it's probably going to need a, a rejig of the VPUB because if I put it behind my head, up in that space up there, it's probably going to look like some kind of uh, halo or something like that. 
So, Mark, thank you so much. I'm blown away by this. I think it's just the most amazing thing. And uh, I hope I can do it justice, my friend. Thank you so much. Whoa. Just amazing. It weighs about 20 kilos as well. It's heavy. I'm going to need to get some real uh, wall anchors. Anyway, welcome everybody. Slancha, I hope you're all doing very, very well. Before we get our Is It A Speyside game on the go, I'll share my first remarkable whiskey. And I'm sipping it just now. And it's remarkable. Um, look, Mark is here. He's saying you're very welcome. I was looking for you, Mark. Thank you so much, he's saying. Um, eh, just amazing. Superb. I'm very glad that you were in, my friend. I'm glad you made it along tonight. Um, it's really a wonderful thing. Daniel Gray is saying that's not the worst thing, <laughs> a whiskey halo for a whiskey evangelist. Yeah, I suppose. But no, that's not That's not going to be the idea. And Graham Fraser is saying, Saint Aquavite. Jimmy Legg is saying, what does a wife think of that giant glass topper? At first she looked at it and she wondered what it was. She thought she was, but she remembered seeing it, but I showed her the clip from a few weeks ago. But I don't think she appreciated the scale of it. And I don't think she appreciated just how fine it was. Um, how amazing uh, as, a, as a wee work of art it was, honestly, a solid wooden things. Um, and this room is my room. Um, she doesn't really, I don't even think she cares too much, honestly. I think uh, she's quite happy for me to do what I like in this wee room. Uh, but hopefully I'll do something that she thinks is quite attractive with it too. Um, yes, I'm wondering how to, how to fashion it in. I've always fancied a couch in here, a wee sofa, just a wee Ikea sofa or something like that, something sitting over here so that when I have guests or visitors in or something, there's kind of a place. Um, and I don't know, I've got kind of longer term plans that, that I might take over this entire room rather than just the corner uh, that you see right now. I'd get rid of this wardrobe, get rid of this cabinet and things and just turn the whole thing into a bit of a studio. So it'll have its place. Anyway, back to the whiskey. This is a remarkable whiskey to me because of the distillery that it's from. It's not one of the best whiskies I've had this year, but it's one of the best whiskies I've had from this distillery. I have had good whiskies from this distillery in the past, and I'm very, very hopeful that I'll continue to have good whiskies from this distillery in the future. But it's been tough for me. It's one that I've never fully connected with. This is an interesting whiskey. It's a different whiskey. It's lots of uh, salted jam. Uh, there's almost a, there's a nice kind of char thing going on from it. Um, it's still quite light. It, it does best with a wee splash of water in it. It is cast strength. But the, the whiskey in my glass tonight is is a 54% Jura from Douglas Lane. This is their old particular. I was on a tasting. This happened to be part of the tasting. It was a try before a buy for it, which Dura honestly is for me. Um, this is part of their element series. This is the water um, element, and it's a uh, Dura. What's the age on this? Remind me what the age is. It's a 12-year-old Dura, distilled in October 2007 and bottled in December 2019. I bought this during that tasting I was having, I was so struck with it, I decided this is different from any Jura I've had in the past. And that is a remarkable thing. Jura, this is now, I have a, I do have a sealed bottle of Jura. I'm not even sure which one it is. I think it could be the Elixir or something, I'm not sure. But I do have a bottle of Jura on hand. But what I'm really hoping is, is going to happen with that bottle is, I might have a need to open it as a comparison at some point in the future, but maybe I'll happen upon somebody who loves Jura, who loves that particular bottle, and I can make a gift of it. I'm not in a hurry to open it and enjoy it. I don't really love it. Um, but this is something that I can enjoy. There's a nice spice to this. Like I said, it's got that kind of salted jam thing going on with it. Um, and I was very pleased to find a Jura that I found to be remarkable. What's interesting, though, is I heard from Jason Julia, the editor at Malt, that he had also discovered a Jura 
that he found particularly remarkable. Now, I haven't caught the review on that yet. I don't know if it's released yet. I think it might be an upcoming review. Correct me if I've made a mistake there. Um, but I'm curious to see what he scores that and what he tells us and what he shares about it. Because anybody that knows Jason from Malt Review, um, he really struggles to find Jura uh, that he can connect with. But there you go, he's managed to find one. I'm not sure which one it is. You'll have to keep your eye on Malt Review to discover um, eh, what he thinks about it when it comes up. Whiskey Dodi George Braley is saying, I bought the Jura too on that tasting. Wonderful stuff, George. I remember you participating with us there, um, and I'm glad that you got hold of it too. I wonder if you've opened it and tried it yet. Um, Chris is saying, Acrofiti, have you tried Jura French Oak? I'm not a fan of Jura of late, but I picked the French Oak up on a whim and actually quite enjoyed it. This is an important thing, honestly. We, we, we talk about branding, we talk about favourite distilleries, we talk about all of these things. But whiskey will continually teach you to keep your mind open, even for whole genres of whiskey, whether you are loving scotch and you kind of don't connect with bourbon or vice versa, um, or whether you found yourself only enjoying peated islas, whatever it may be, keep your mind open always. Um, it's easy to try before you buy through all the tastings, all the virtual tastings that's going on, all the samples that you can exchange, all the samples that you can buy from the whiskey exchange, from Master and Malt, from the Dram team and companies like that that have subscription services. That It's easy to try before you buy these days and always keep your mind open. The amount of times that I've had a sample that's made me go, ah, on something that I would never, ever have purchased on my own. Um, and I think that's what Chris is suggesting there, that despite not being keen on Jura, he's been quite impressed by the French Oak. Greg's Whiskey Guide is saying, the only Jura I'd like to have in my collection, well, amongst those he can afford, he's saying, would be the prophecy, heavily peated but discontinued, maybe some independent bottle. Uh, Jura Prophecy, my wife bought for me twice, Jura Prophecy was the one with the eye on the bottle. Um, I think you're right, uh, Greg, it was a non-age statement uh, going from memory, um, and it was peated. Um, but the first time I drank that bottle of Jura Prophecy, I enjoyed it, and I think either she bought me a second bottle or perhaps I bought myself a second bottle, and then I struggled to get through it. Either the bottle had changed or I had moved on, probably more likely I had moved on. Because there was a time in my whiskey life, my whiskey journey, that my brother and I would buy a bottle of Jura and and get through it over the course of a weekend together. We enjoyed the whiskey. Perhaps back then, I'm talking about 12, 14, 15 years ago, we weren't being analytical. We were just simply enjoying exploring whiskey. We didn't know any better. We didn't really care about the 40%. We didn't care about the chill filtration, the price point whiskey. We didn't care um, about so many aspects of whiskey that I do now, um, and we simply enjoyed it. We have to always remember that, I think, at the risk of getting a wee bit preachy. Laura McGurk is in and she's joined the Aquavita Barflies. Laura, thank you for your support. I hope you enjoy using the emojis over the summer break. I'm going to uh, tidy up the emojis a wee bit. I think we're enjoying the emojis, but I think the wee badges that you get next to your name, you start off with a barfly and then you go through coloured badges but i've got an idea how to evolve that a wee bit so you might see that change over summer as well but laura thank you for supporting me and welcome to the barflies cheers nash jura prophecy greg is saying yes it depends on the batch variation first ones were not good but then richard reworked the recipe and managed to get a better balance richard patterson he'll be talking about there david owen is here good to see you david um, and he's saying he actually likes the superstition. And Jimmy, like I said, I always found Jura very easy to drink at my local when not paying too much attention. Do you know, you make a good point, Jimmy. That's probably what that Jura is uh, intended to do. Before I go on and bring in my guests for a wee game of Is It A Space Side, um, I want to plug again what I think is continuing to be a fantastically compelling thing to get involved in during the summer. That's Belfast Whiskey Week. Don't consider for a second that I'm in any way uh, affiliated with it, that there's anything uh, coming back to me in return for, for talking about this. It's simply a, a concept that I think whiskey benefits from uh, and people should benefit from as well. 
I've never seen variation like this in tastings available in a virtual format before. Have a look at it. Uh, the Facebook group is a Belfast Whiskey Week and Eventbrite is Belfast Fis Whiskey Week. Half of the tastings are gone now, they're sold out. But from the 24th of July through to the 1st of August, there's a bunch of things available. I'm going to try and participate in a couple if I can. Um, there was discussions for me to host a couple, but it hits right the week I'm going on holiday, it hits. And uh, I think I'm probably not going to be able to support there. But I do want to support uh, the concept. I think it's a fantastic thing. And I wish Paul and all the team, Phil, everybody else that's involved in that uh, thing over there in um, Northern Ireland, I hope they have a fantastic festival because they're certainly trying to make it as inclusive as they possibly can. Uh, Haken Bratsberg or Haken Bratsberg. I'm sorry, my friend, I, I bet you I'm mispronouncing your name. But he's also uh, clicked that join button and they joined the Aquavita Barflies. Thank you, my friend, for your support and welcome. Cheers. Peter Hunt is here and he's saying, I've got a Douglas Lane 21 year old Jura that I've left unopened after not enjoying the core range. Maybe I should dare to break the seal. Yeah, I mean, it's this is not a whiskey that I would pour for people to impress them. This is just a very, very different slice of Jura, which I imagine your 21 year old from Douglas Lane would be a similar thing, maybe. Um, but I, I think through that, you know, I've always been looking, actively looking for a Jura that could teach me that Juras can be good because I'm pretty sure that what they make at that distillery is fantastic whiskey. But the marketing, the packaging of it, the intended market can dilute things a wee bit and take it away from an enthusiast's palate. Perhaps that's what's going on there. It's as diplomatic as it can be, I think. Um, but this Jura is one this is not one that you would drink like the superstition, like Jimmy Legg was talking about, uh, to sit back and not think too much. This is a Jura that does make you think every sip. Um, but I'm glad to have it in the collection, and I'm going to be uh, enjoying pouring it for people who have probably been a wee bit like me and found Jura to be a bit um, off, weird, strange, annoying, or bland in the past. Wonderful stuff. Anyway, I do have a wee game of uh, is it a space side to get out of the way before I share. I've got at least half a dozen whiskies, maybe more. Um, I'm interested to hear what kind of remarkable experiences you've had in 2020 so far, because let's face it, there's not been a hell of a lot going on other than hiding from this thing <laughs> that we're hiding from and uh, perhaps getting a wee bit more time than we otherwise would, would have to have enjoyed a wee dram or two and see what kind of whiskies you've found to be remarkable. Anyway, let's have a game. I'll try and make it as quick as I can. Let's say pull in my friend Sid Martin. If you're available, Sid, if you're free, give a thumbs up. Good man. And they uh, Sid uh, is coming back for another bite at the cherry, right? Very much, yep. Yeah. Uh, are, are you... You are okay. You were muted for me there. I can hear you oh. clearly now. What, what happened last time? Did I? Were you guessing or was I guessing? Who had the? You were guessing, and I had the Highland Park Dragon Legend, and you sniped. I sniped it. That's right. You you went for a you went for a bizarre one, an, an off piste one, and I managed to sneak it. I was very happy about that. Tell yeah. me, do you, do you have a bottle, or, or do you need me to have a bottle tonight? I have a bottle. Right. Okay. So I'm asking again. Fantastic yeah. stuff. Okay, let's bring this up again. Sid, you know the rules. There's no need to take you through it. Anybody that's watching for the first time tonight and doesn't know the rules, you'll pick this up quick enough. It's pretty easy stuff. But I've got 10 questions plus a wee bonus hardly at the end to try and guess the bottle that Sid is holding off screen. He can only answer yes or no to my questions. Okay, Sid, I have to ask you, my friend, is it a space aid? Yes. Okay. We have a space side. Um, is it a Glen? No, it's not a Glen. Is it one of the big four Diageo, Pernod Ricard, Edrington, or Grants? Yes. Is it Diageo or Pernod Ricard? Yes. Is it Diageo? Yes. 
So it's a non-Glen Diageo. It's a core range, Said It has to be core range, right? Yep. Now, remember, anybody that's in the chat, they can play along with this. They can potentially guess it before me. Um, it's core range from Diageo, space side. It's not a Glen. Is it a flora and fauna? No. Okay. Does it have an age statement? Yes. That's a terrible question to have asked. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I, well, it's not really because there are there's cardos out there that are um, depending on whether you would count Dulwini as a space side. You would maybe there's not any statements of that. Is it part of the classic malts or the extended classic malts? You're not I, sure. I, I'll ask it. I'll ask. I'll ask a different question. Don't worry. Um, is it 12 years old? No. It's not a Glen. It's a space side from Diageo. <sighs> what I should have done, I had a... I had a spray a space side spreadsheet, but it's not open tonight. <laughs> I need it. All I need to do is think. I didn't set the timer. <laughs> so I've got some time. It's not flora and fauna. Definitely not flora and fauna, so it's not Ben Rennes. It's not a thrust. <laughs> it's no point in asking about ABV. It's Diageo. It's going to be 43%, potentially 40. It's not 12 years old, so it's not Craig and more. Glen Elgin's a Glen. I'm all over the place, Said I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I was feeling this mug last time and you sniped it, so I'm not counting any chickens. Yeah, don't be. <laughs> Is it? It's no point in. See, Diageo have got Glen Dullin, they've got. It's a Glen Glen. Dufton, Mortlach. Is it in Dufton? No. It's not from Dufton. Down to one. <clears throat> it's not so it's not Dufton, it's not Mortlach, it's not Glendullen. Craig and Moore is 12 years old. McCandy is a 12 year old. Cardu is a 12 year old. Dillion's Flora and Fauna. Oh my God, Sid, I think you've got me here. Unless Dillwini potentially. Dillwini's a 15. Is it Dillwini? No. Okay. You've got me, Sid. It's age statement, isn't it? Still. <laughs> it's going to be... I should have asked if it was older than 12 years. It's an older one, isn't it? Yep. Is it a Cardu 18-year-old? No. Oh my goodness. That was painful. That was absolutely painful. But you've got me. You've absolutely got me easily. That's what it is, Sid. You mentioned the distillery. I thought it was a 12 year old. Oh, is that core range? I, I looked in the uh, the malt whiskey yearbook and it says, it says it's in the core range. Well done, Sid. Well done. Nukandu, 21 year old. Never even seen that bottle before. There you go. Certainly, is it open? It is, yeah. 
And is it nice? Uh, it's, it's, it's nice. It's soft. It's quite floral, sweet. Yeah, it's, it's nice. 40% as well? 43. 43. Okay. Yeah. Could be worse. For, but a 21-year-old in a can do, you've got me. Absolutely got me. And it's not even on the radar. It's not even on the radar. Well done, Sid. You've get, you've won yourself a wee sniper coin. I'll get it sent yeah, down right. to you. And uh, well, well done. done. Well done, buddy. Well done. You bugger. <laughs> See you later, <laughs> my friend. Cheers. Oh, and a can do 21. Deary me. Now, I didn't set the timer. And the reason I haven't set a timer is because I don't actually know where my phone is. Yeah, I usually have it sat next to me, but I don't have my phone anywhere here tonight. I'm not sure where I've left it. It doesn't matter. Just need to try and be a bit neater next time. I'm going to reach over to uh, I put a face to the name tonight. This is the first time that you've seen him. This is Matthew. This is Multi Haggis Muncher. Matthew, you in good shape, my friend? Yes. Let's bring in Matthew Multi Haggis Muncher. Now, where are you, Matthew? You're up in the northeast Aberdeen, thereabouts, aren't you? Where are you, sorry? Oh, I wonder if you're muted. Maybe they can hear you, but I can't. Yeah, that's it now. Okay, fantastic. Now I can hear you. Where are you, buddy? Up in Fraserburgh, northeast of Scotland. Fraserburgh, fantastic. I knew you were up in the northeast somewhere. We've met a couple of times, but it's always just kind of been in passing. Uh, we did enjoy a tasting in Edinburgh that time with your buddy. It's good, yeah. Um, that yeah. was with uh, Hector um, at Jeffrey Street Whiskey, wasn't it? Magic. <laughs> it was a nice day. It was a nice yeah. day. And I, I remember that you cracked open that wonderful spring bank from the Society. Um, yeah. And uh, it was an incredible whiskey. It was a wine finish, I think. We had a nice time that oh, yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Port, port finish. Fantastic. Are you ready for a wee game of Visit a Space Side? Yes, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll ask you. Well, you're going to ask me, okay? So you thank you very much. Thank you for your bravery. You need me to have a bottle on hand. I do have a bottle here, buddy. I may have used this before, but I think it's okay. It's that uh, one that was handy for me earlier. Um, good luck, buddy. I'll bring up this uh, countdown. We don't have a timer tonight. I hope that's okay for everyone. And uh, good luck, my friend. Ask away. Okay. Uh, first question, is it a space side? Aye, it is a space side, Matthew. Okay, and I'll go along the same lines as you asked. It's a, uh, is that a Glen? It is a Glen. Uh, is it? Is it owned by one of the big, the big five companies? The, the Diageo. It's not. No. It's not one of the big four. So it's not Pellerica, Diageo. It's not Grants, and it's not Edrington. Nope. Okay. So could be, could be Glen Alkey, Glen Fiddich, Glen Bartles, uh, Glen Devon. Uh, I'm I'm doing my best poker face here, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it a double barreled name, as in Glen Murray or Glen Grant? Great question. Yes, it is. <laughs> so it must be either Glenn, Glenn Grant or Glenn Murray. Glenn Grant, 18. Oh, you went for the snipe. No. Is it Glenn Grant? No. Glenn Murray, Elgin Classic then. Yes, <laughs> superb, superb. That's just yeah. far too flash, far too smart. Excellent, Matthew. I wouldn't have expected anything less from you, buddy. Superb <laughs> stuff. Superb. Thanks. 
Now, let me ask you, what was the bottle? Because you don't have many core ranges in your collection, you admitted. What was the bottle that you had up your sleeve to try and uh, test me with? Oh, uh, <clears throat> the Glengarry Founders. Glengarry Founders Reserve. Yep. Oh. That would have been a tough one. If I'd have got Eastern Highlands, maybe I would have got there. Um, but aye, that would have been a tricky one. Yeah, expect to see that being pulled at a game <laughs> in the future. Matthew, that's me. I'm two down tonight. You've you've beaten me. Well done, my friend. And that just goes to show that sometimes it's it can be good to ask. We should be. Some of us should be asking from time to time. You won yourself a wee glass topper. Uh, they're supposed to be getting dispatched this week. Um, these glass toppers are made out of a food safe acrylic. There's a sniper coin that'll only be available to people that play this game and win. Either if you win in the chat, or if you win uh, by playing me here, you'll get one of the coins. I'll show you when they finally arrive. But because they're made of food safe ac acrylic, by the time I placed the order during lockdown. Every man and his dog is after this acrylic because they're using it as the screens and takeaways, and cashiers and shops, and they're using it um, in restaurants. They're using this uh, sheets of acrylic everywhere. So I've had to wait a wee bit longer than I would have. But you've won yourself a coin, Matthew. Thanks so much for joining me, my friend. Okay, cheers. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Stay, right. stay till the end, won't you? Yep, I will. Yep. Thank you. Excellent. Now, I've got somebody else that wants to come in and have another wee go, so I might go uh, three to the wall tonight. I might uh, end up. Um, this is Cousin Kevin, who started employing um, uh, his whiskey knowledge and talents on YouTube recently. Now, he started out, uh, I was keeping a wee eye on it, we see how he's doing, and I have to say, I think he's quite canny. I think he's developing a nice wee thing there, and I think he's enjoying himself. Let's bring Kevin in, Cousin Kevin. You are, I, I say cousin Kevin, and you are genuinely my cousin. Um, <laughs> we've been hanging out for years drinking whiskey together, and it's uh, nice to see you working in whiskey, and it's nice to see you uh, bringing it on YouTube as well. Are you quite enjoying that thing, the YouTube thing? Yeah, it was just a start. I started it with the work. is just a wee chat to do things, and I thought, oh, I'll try this on my own, leading from you and watching all the other guys online, and thought, let's do it. So um, I started it, then we were putting wee paint patches on the wall, to see what we would actually do it and the missus was like you need to stop doing it in there because it looks a riot so i was forced to paint in wallpaper so it's, we've we've got it done but no i'm really enjoying it it's a it's good wee buzz it's it's relaxing quite find it therapeutic find it therapeutic Aye. well obviously you're you're probably of the generation that's a wee bit more comfortable on camera but i had to go through a huge uh, <laughs> learning curve to be comfortable on camera honestly yeah. it does take a lot of courage and not only are you doing that, seeing yourself, but you're putting yourself out there in public as well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drop this in the chat. How many subscribe, subscri subscribers do you have, Kevin? Oh, I think I'm sitting on maybe 15, 16, something like that. Not too many. Right. Anybody that's willing to click on the link I've just dropped and to go and give Kevin a wee watch and give him a wee bit of support. You don't need to stay there if he doesn't earn any stripes. <laughs> if he doesn't bring you interesting content, you don't need to hang give around. Give me a thumbs down. But, that's right but help them along and uh, it's because i think the most important thing when you're doing that is to have the interaction and like you say with the thumbs down even if it's people trying to give you some uh constructive criticism from time to time and oh, things i'm all for that yeah 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 it's nice to have the interaction it's nice to feel like you're part of a community and part of something and i know you've been enjoying being part of that community for a long yeah. time so i think it's going to be interesting uh, to see what you bring to us and content going forward I'll, I'll think friend. of some some new things and and freshen it up anyway in time. But yeah, getting there, getting there. But tonight, I don't care about that. I'm all about getting revenge and getting the three 0 for the barflies. That's. I'm not, <laughs> See, I'm this not is here, this is starting time. to turn, and I'm not sure I like this. That this is just kind of beat Roy, beat Roy. I mean, I've not even had my haircut since last time. It's been that much a shock. Uh -huh. Listen, the only reason I've had a haircut since last time is that I'm either cutting my own hair or I'm asking Lynn to do it for me. <laughs> next week, buddy, next week the hairdressers are opening again. Okay, you ready I'm to in. play a game of Is It a Space Side? I am. Are you asking or answering? Do you have a bottle or do you need me to have I've one? I've got a bottle here. So Okay, I'm doing the asking. asking then. Okay, yes. let's have a go. Let's Kevin, it. is it a Space Side? No. Is it a Highland? Yes. Is it Western Highlands? Sorry, let me ask. Let me ask again. So I've got my wee map here if you need it. It's all right. Okay. 
Um, uh, I say Western Highlands. I don't mean islands. I mean Western mainland Highlands. No. Is it an island? No. So it's, it's either Eastern or Southern Highlands then. Potentially yes. Northern Highlands. Okay. Um Is it one of the big four, Edrington, Pernod Ricard, Diageo, or Grants? No. Is it a Southern Highland? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, I would say yes. Okay. Definitely. So Definitely. Southern Highland, we could have, it could be Aberfeldy, it could be Edradour. It could be Deanston, it could be Glen Goyne, it could be Loch Lomond, but if it was any of those three, you wouldn't have been kind of in and out and in and out wondering. So I'm going to go over towards the Aberfeldy neck of the woods. Could be, uh, you know, Blair Athol is Diageo, Aberfeldy is Dewars, it could be Aberfeldy, Edra Dower. Okay. Um, does it have an age statement? No. This is how I felt last time. I remember <laughs> it well. I remember it well. <laughs> it's, it's not, I, I don't think it's going to be Edra Dower. Aberfeldy are age stated. Um, is it? Is it a Tullibardin? Yes. Oh, <laughs> is it the Tullibardin? Oh, you've got a Tullibardin that we've tried together. I've got a and few I Tullibardins. I don't remember what it is. Oh, sorry? I've got a few. Okay, it has to be core range. Is it Tullibardin 225? The 225? Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oops. oh goodness. I've, I was like, I'm in. I've got it this time. He's not getting to a barn. He's got two. He'll get too low and he'll have to take a shot in the dark. And you go and break my heart again. <laughs> again. I don't. Honestly, as soon as that was a good question to ask the age statement thing. Because it took out, um, it, I was thinking the the, the Edward R. Caledonia, you know, 12 year old. I was thinking about Aberfeldy's, they're, they're all age. I can't think of a non age statement Aberfeldy. Um, aye, so then I was suddenly searching around the map. Um, wonderful stuff. I'm very I'm pleased. Fine. Thank I'm you. Not, I'm totally not, but it's fine. <laughs> you know, it's all about taking part and um, letting the team down. I'm all for that. I was I was hoping for the 3 0 tonight. That's what I was, I was going uh, for. You were hoping to send me home with my tail what, between my legs. Because you said everything bar Tullibarden, I was like, I'm in. I'm in the clear. There's, he's not going to even sniff at Tullibarden. Then you go and nail it in the first dig. That's. Oh. No, it was it was the age statement thing. I had to start. I, had, oh. I was scrambling, and then I, re I realized I was on the, the wrong trail when yeah. I. When I realised it was non age statement, buddy, but I'm so job. sorry. It was it was close. It was very close. You nearly had me. I felt I was feeling it. I, I thought it was in a weak position there, um, but I you don't you don't get your coin yet. But you'll have another <laughs> one day. One day, sometime lucky they say. So I'll get I'll get it in it after the summer. Listen, keep up, Kev Grant on whiskey. I'll stick that in there again. I'll stick that link in as well, just to in case anybody hasn't given our Kevin a wee sub. I'll keep watching your content. I'll keep an eye on you, my friend. <laughs> uh, keep bringing it, and I hope just keep doing it as long as you're enjoying it. Okay. I will. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and thanks everyone if you do subscribe as well. And um, I'll stay around to the end and try and get a ten on the quiz. In. But, yeah, but oh, okay, the pressure I'm that you bring on yourself, buddy. An hour and ten minutes to dry my eyes. So it's all right. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thank you so much. Take care, Kev. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Ah, I managed to get away with it. I managed to sneak one at the end, but it is that game is turning into a catch out Aquavite game rather than is it a space side. But I don't mind that. I don't mind it at all. I've poured, well, I was chatting and playing there. I've poured another wee remarkable whiskey and I'll share what that is right now. 
Jimmy Legg mentioned in a comment quite recently, and I don't remember where it was, but he talked about the concept of having a whiskey that you don't analyse, that you're not thinking about sip by sip. That's why we love single malts. It's why we love our whiskey so much. We do like to analyse a wee bit. But for me, sometimes I just like a nice, easy, enjoyable, flavoursome whiskey that I'm just simply enjoying and I analyse less. Now, there's lots of easy drinking whiskies out there that can do that. There are blends, there are gateway whiskies. There are lots of ways to approach that concept. But I have now two empty bottles of this. And I tried, the first time I tried this was when Kevin brought it over. The guy who's just been on brought this over and we had a wee dram in the bottom of the bottle and I quite liked it. Now I have... Uh, I've got through a bottle and a half of it. And I have to say that, yes, I've been sharing this out, but most of it is me. I'm really loving this. And that makes it a remarkable whiskey. This is another Douglas Lane, believe it or not, but this is one of their remarkable regional malts. Um, that wasn't intentional, by the way. This is their 18-year-old Timorous Beastie. It's great value for an 18-year-old whiskey. It's very inexpensive for its age. It's blended malt. There, there's no grain in this. This is still malt whiskey, but it's not a single malt. So what they've tried to do is put something together that's quite engaging, have brings a bit of complexity, but at the same time, an easy drinker. This flashes and flickers. There's, there is lots of complexity in here, but the overriding enjoyment from this for me there's a lovely palate-pleasing dryness to it. But it's not, it's, it's a wee bit grassy, a wee bit herbal, a wee bit biscuity, a wee bit malty. But there's a lovely, lovely prickle to it, a lovely texture. Nice cinnamon and ginger. The sweetness is a very light, light honey sweetness. And it does flash and flicker. There is lots going on in here, but at the same time, the overall enjoyment is something that you can just, it's an easy drinker. And it is, it is Moorish, which is why I've managed to get through so much. There's an empty bottle through there plus this. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm drinking this and I'm enjoying this whiskey. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think it's great value. And I can imagine myself getting more connected with uh, other kinds of malt whiskey um, in the months and years ahead, blended malts, of course. I struggle to use the blended word. I think uh, Fred Lane, when he was on earlier in the year, he talked about it. He talked about the fact that blended. Um, I think it's a lot to do with education, uh, but I see this as being malt whiskey. It's not a single malt, of course. It was blended malt. But I think these bring a lot of value. They really do. I'm going to get on about price. I'm going to talk about price in a little while. The blended malts are still where the value is at. Yes, we don't get our single malt experience. We don't get to dial right into that distillery. We don't get to talk to the nth degree about what makes it different from its other releases and things. It's a blended malt. We don't know what's in the makeup most of the time. But if you're looking for a nice, enjoyable, good quality whiskey experience and you're not married to your single malts, consider um, blended malt whiskey, especially the value that it's bringing. That's a remarkable whiskey to me. Jimmy Legg is saying, Aquavita, it seems to me that you like whiskey. I know that you do too, Blair. Uh, palate pleasing dryness, you say. Mm. Um, I do enjoy a dry whiskey. Um, I like a juicy whiskey. I like a sweet whiskey. I like, I, you're right, Jimmy. You've, you've hit the nail on the head. I just enjoy whiskey. Peter Box is here. Good to see you, Peter. He's saying, 18 Timorous Beastie is one of my favourites lately. So glad that you're enjoying it as well, uh, Peter. It is fantastic. It's an easy, enjoyable dram. Um, Greg is saying, a great one, not in my shelves yet, <laughs> Aquavite. It's not expensive. Jimmy Legg is saying, Royce Cutting has gotten the Aquavite bump. I hope you're talking about uh, um, the game. I think he's okay. He's licking his wounds in the background right now. He'll be back for more in the future. Uh, Greg's Whiskey Guy is saying, please tell Kevin he is now 80 subs. <laughs> you guys are wonderful, but put him on notice. He has to bring good quality content. 
he has to keep bringing that passion and that enthusiasm and he has to keep bringing a value and keeping us all engaged uh, and joy having wee drams alongside Kevin in real life and I don't see why he can't succeed and have a lot of fun bringing whiskey content uh, to us uh, through YouTube wonderful stuff somebody just bought me a dram I'll scroll down and see Peter Peter Eichen is here Peter I know that you're on the waiting list for a game of as a space side if I'd have known you were going to be about tonight eh, I'd have reached out to you my friend I hope we can make it work I know the time zones are ridiculous for you away down there in the southern hemisphere he's saying mostly catch these on the replay so taking the opportunity to send a dram before your break Peter thank you so much my friend always wonderful to have you in Slanchova cheers thank you for your dram Peter Hunt saying Aquaviti, uh, Kevin is just six off a hundred. <laughs> Let's tip the scale barflies. Kevin is saying thank you for the shout out and thank you fellow barflies for following me and I will have good content for you all. McCann Fenner Rare Doc is here to all Rock Oyster 18 year old buyers. Doc sourced. Uh, did you open the bottle yet? I didn't buy the Rock Oyster 18 from you. I've got the Rock Oyster 21, which was £78 for a 21-year-old malt whiskey. The value is fantastic. Now, Rock Oyster, the 21-year-old, is certainly heavily towards Isla. It's fairly heavily peated. Um, but it's a lovely, easy, approachable peated style. Um, again, I think it's a cracking whiskey. While we're on the peated theme and doubling up and buying a second bottle, I'm going to share another one with you. Uh, this is a uh, Aerolite Lindsay. This is a 10-year-old single malt from Isla. Um, you might remember it's been featured uh, a couple of times before. Aerolite Lindsay is an anagram of 10-year-old Isla. Uh, this is made by... Um, I think it's Atom Brands. I think it's the guys at Master of Malt. But this is an Isla single malt Scotch whiskey from an undisclosed distillery. I think we can guess it's probably Kalila, but it's not always Kalila, honestly speaking. Um, if it's Kalila, fantastic because it's utterly solid. I find this utterly solid. I don't know if this is available everywhere, but it's available from Master of Malt, so there's a good chance it's going to be shipping everywhere. This is very inexpensive for a 10-year-old Isla. It's much cheaper than the, let's say, 10-year-old uh, uh, Ardbegs, um, Laphroaigs. Uh, it's about the similar price, actually, to a Laphroaig 10-year-old. I would take this over Laphroaig 10 every single day, not least because it's bottled at 46% as well. We believe this to be natural colour, and it's unchill filtered. This is a good whiskey. This is my second bottle of it. And this is the type of Isla whiskey that you're happy to take away to a beach fire, throw away the cork and just drink it, pour it for friends, let everybody enjoy what's a good quality whiskey at a good price. This is remarkable that whiskey like this still exists. If we can get over the brand snobbery of not potentially knowing the, the, the producing distillery. Again, do you see how price is creeping into the messaging a wee bit? Jeffrey uh, Pedersen is here as well. Jeffrey, wonderful to have you joining the Barflies, my friend. Thank you so much and welcome in. And uh, Whiskey Reaper, that's a new name, but he's bought me a sticker, a thumbs up sticker, Whiskey Reaper, uh, and a wee virtual dram as well. Nice to welcome you here. Hope you have a nice time and you hang around a well. Slanchy, my friend, thank you for your dram. This is easy, easy to drink. Ah, this is the Timorous Beastie I'm, I'm speaking about here. Really enjoying it. Luna Aaron is saying, Master Malt still don't ship to Germany. Does any barfly know whether they ship to other countries? Well, Luna, we'll just need to employ the mule network. I know that not people aren't traveling right now, but if, if there's whiskey that you're after, there's enough of us out there that'll take delivery of your product for you right up until we see you at the next festival, barfly event, whatever it may be. Luna, I'm sure if there's something that you're particularly keen to get your hands on and you can't, there's going to be enough willing folk out there to help you out. Don't worry about it. Suitcases can hold a few bottles of gift whiskey, right? Um, there's another one here that I want to share before I start getting on to my big rant. Uh, about prices, although this factors in as well. This is the first one that I'm going to speak about in a negative, slightly negative context. I like the scope of this whiskey. Interestingly, it's from the exact same uh, brand, the same producer that I've just shared with you, that Aerolite Lindsay is from the same company. This is a blend. This is the World Whiskey Blend uh, from that boutique whiskey company. 
Um, I've enjoyed a fantastic amount of great, fantastic releases from that Batiki Whiskey Company. It's frustrating that it's in a 50 CL bottle, oftentimes, honestly, um, because you don't often see the price reflect that smaller bottle size. And I know there's lots and lots of reasons for it, and I know that they're able to get their whiskey out to more people. There's lots of positive things about a 50 CL bottle. Um, so I, I tend to try before I buy. Wonderfully, they have a presence. Um, uh, almost every festival you go to, Dave and the crew will be there. Dave Worthington, fantastic guy, and he'll be sharing and pouring whiskies for you right and left. And I've loved some amazing releases from that particular whiskey company. This one is different. This is a blend, a world whiskey blend. Love the concept. It's in a 70 CL bottle. Wonderful stuff. It's at 41.6%, which is a bizarre ABV, I think this is more to do with the postcode of uh, Sam Simmons, who was responsible for putting this together. I bought this because I was curious about this world whiskey blend. So there's going to be whiskey in here from all over the world, the Americas, from Asia, from Europe, from Scotland, even Ireland, England, from all over the world. They've put together this fantastic uh, idea, this concept. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's become a whiskey for me that I can't really enjoy and sip neat. I'm not loving it. There's far too many other whiskies of a similar style that I can sip neat. Now, that's not a deal breaker. It's a blended whiskey, so perhaps it's meant to be thrown in a highball with ginger ale or whatever your preferred cocktail or mixer may be. I understand completely. But this is £32. There's a bunch of whiskies that will do that for me at much, much less than that, sometimes even half of that price. So it leaves me wondering, this is a wonderful concept, a wonderful idea, that kind of global collaboration thing, the idea of whiskies from all over to make this product. Um, but it's ended up being something that's a wee bit neither meat nor fish for me. And uh, interestingly, I have sampled this. I have poured it for a couple of folk. I've not got through a lot of this myself, as you can see. And uh, I'm curious to hear what they think about it as well. This is not a bad whiskey. This is even a good whiskey and a good blend. Certainly an interesting blend, but it's not £32 worth of blend. Just my thought on it. I know it's a small batch. I know it's different. This isn't a large volume whiskey. It's a completely different concept and idea, but it's remarkable for those reasons. <laughs> And I'll go on to this one to kind of hammer home my point. This is a soft whiskey. This is not going to engage the majority of the people in the chat tonight. It's not going to get them excited. It's not going to make them rush out and replace bottle after bottle of this. However, when you're looking for somebody just to enjoy a nice whiskey with you, they're not really into whiskey, but they want something soft, something easy to drink, something approachable, something rich, something fruity, something with flavor that they can actually reach in and pick out as a newbie. That's maybe the type of person that you're not going to crack out your 25-year-old imperial for, right? But you do want to engage them, and you don't want to put them off with a high ABV. You want to give them something that's round and soft and easy and approachable. And again, we're back in blended malt, because that is exactly what this does. This is from Edrington. This is the Naked Grouse. It's a blended malt. We can guess that it's going to have a Glenrothes in there. It's going to have some Highland Park in there. Perhaps a touch of Macallan I would be surprised. Maybe they're sourcing whiskies to make this blended malt. We're not really sure. Regardless, this is 40%. No bones about it. This is very, very clearly a gateway whiskey. It's an easy and fairly inexpensive approachable whiskey. But I'm telling you, I paid £19 for this. The Whiskey Rev, when he was working for Macallan, brought me a small mini of this. And he poured it for me blind as the starter of that night and asked me what I thought of it. And I had to say, this is a decent whiskey. I'm not sure what it is, but it's decent. I'm enjoying this. What is it? He told me it's, it's Naked Grouse. Always keep your mind open. Always understand the place that a whiskey has. This is not going to set the world alight. But at £19, I bought it on offer. It's remarkable for that. Lee Hosey Haddington Whiskey saying it was £14 at Morrison's a few weeks ago. Great value, I thought. Absolutely. David Owen is saying I'm doing well tonight, Roy. I'm still here and awake. Hey, David, I think you're in Germany, I think, so you're probably an hour ahead. I hope 
I'm able to keep it engaging enough for you not to drop off. But if you have to have a wee sleep, don't worry about it, my friend. The VPUBs are here for you to pick up on the replay, and they just are intended to fit around your mood, your energy levels, and your lifestyle, my friend. Um, it's always nice to have you in, David. And I know I assumed it with a name like David Owen um, that you might be in Wales. Um, but I know uh, that we've chatted about that and you're not. Helen is saying, always have a bottle of Naked Grouse on the shelves. Fab for the price. Wonderful stuff. Uh, Jamie Brown. Jamie, good to see you, my friend. You're welcome here. I have a friend with a huge collection who absolutely loves grouse. Can't get enough of it. There are grouse fans out there. Grouse is a blended grouse. Um, somebody reminded me recently of the black grouse, the smoky grouse as well. I'd forgotten about it. I since saw it on a supermarket. It was on offer. I was tempted, but I didn't buy it. I'm trying to cut back right now. Um, but this one uh, for £19 is fantastic. Remarkable value. I'm getting through these. I'm getting through these tonight. Let's see what you guys are saying. And uh, Paul Gibbs is saying, Bert Smedley, that's Mick O'Donnell, uh, put me on to that one. Uh, good for Mick, good for Mick. And that's the thing is that, you know, <laughs> we can be snobby about our scotch. We can decide that we only drink single malts. We can be snobby about our bourbons and chase the exclusive ones, the ones that are hard to get hold of, the more expensive ones. But honestly, are you confident enough to back that up so that in a blind challenge, you can justify that. I know it's much more complex than that. It's much more complex than just the, the blind drinking experience, of course. But I think it's always, whiskey is teaching me time and time again to stay open-minded and to understand that one size never fits all. But more than that, it, one size doesn't even fit one person all the time. It's so mood-driven. And it's situation driven as well. And I think that um, it's easy for you to build even a modest six, eight, ten bottle collection and manage to cover most of those bases. I'm actually touching on a potential future uh, video VPUB uh, topic there when I talk about that, how to put together a small collection. I've got lots and lots of comments, wonderful comments fed back to me throughout Patreon as well, people. Um, chiming in and sharing what their remarkable whiskies were as well. This is from Frank, who's in tonight, Pete Head. Um, what a great start to the year I've had, he says. On January 3rd, a package arrived from TGW, TGWS. I was trying to work out what that acronym, acronym is. There's a quiz question for you. TGW, T, uh, if I thought long enough about that, I would get it. TGWS. Anyway, containing the Glendronach 15 and the Kilkerran 8-year-old at 57.1, which was the Oloroso cask one. Later, I've been pleasantly surprised by 36 years of Anok whiskey, divided by the surprisingly good 12-year-old and the fabulous 24-year-old. Of course, the 24-year-old is still out there. It's not going to last forever. Grab it while you can. Best value in Scotch whiskey single malt at that age right now. It's got to be um, branded. Wonderful stuff. Not for everyone, but I love it. I think it's fantastic. Next to that, I've got a surprise from some of my colleagues due to his 25 years with the company, Lagavulin's 16 year old. The whiskey itself did not surprise me. It's still great. On the downside, I can only think of one Spayburn, Brad and Orac. That's the non-age statement from Spayburn. Luckily, a friend of mine seems to have found something tasteful hidden somewhere in that bottle, so I left him to kill it. Um, I've tried that one and I don't have much a memory of it, um, so probably tells a tale. Uh, recently, I have tried um, uh, a spay burn that I thought was really quite good. It was an age-stated one, um, and I can't even remember what it is now. It'll maybe come to me a bit later. Drew Lane is saying, uh, the Glendronic Revival was also one of my favourites this year. I might even like it better than the 18-year-old, or at least as well. And if the price is figured in, it would be a clear winner for me. Listen, that's why the Glendronic Revival 15-year-old got my whiskey of the year, because it's exclusively sherry matured. Yes, there's some PX in it now. It's not exclusively Oloroso like the other um, uh, releases like the Allardyce, the 18-year-old. But the Revival remains low 60s, 65 pounds, certainly less than 70 pounds for a 15-year-old exclusively sherry matured single malt. That's still a lot of money but it's a good quality whiskey. And if you compare it to its peers, single malt against single malt at that age, that maturation style, that profile of whiskey 
you're going to be hard pushed to beat that on price. We were all nervous that when Brown Foreman got in, involved, that things would start to be watered down, that they would change uh, their focus a little bit. But it's been largely preserved and even supported. And I think they have to be applauded for that. I think Glendronach 15 Revival remains a remarkable whiskey. And I agree with Frank and Drew Lane on both of those. Um, Simon Ray is saying, Deanston 12 heralded his renewed interest in whiskey, sparked by uh, your review, he's talking to me, of the said bottle. Um, I'm glad that people are, are starting to enjoy Deanston. It does take a wee bit of investment. It's not an obvious hook whiskey, but everybody knows how I feel about it. I think it's a wonderful whiskey. I've been talking about Deanston 12 for as long as I've had a channel. It's, it's really, um, you know, if you were only going to have two or three 12 year olds in your collection. Coquerin 12 would probably be there, perhaps Buna Havin 12. Arguably, I think uh, Deanston 12 for me would be would be in that collection as well. And Simon Ray also celebrates Brickladdy Black Arts 6.1. Delicious. Aye, but it's a bit dear, Simon. It's a bit pricey, and you might need to chase it to track it down. Um, but yes. Uh, the Black Arts are, they're dear for a reason, I guess. They are a, a very specific thing in terms of concept. Drew from Arizona is here saying, Aquavita on the price topic, the revival has gone from $89 to 139 here in most of the US. Wow. Okay, we know about the tariff situation. That will explain some of that, but 89 to 139, that's incredible. I wonder if that's a what price the market will stand type thing from Brown Foreman. That's a huge jump in price. It's fifty dollars. Glendronic fifteen is not a hundred and thirty-nine dollar whiskey. It is not. That's a shame. Whiskey novice is, is saying <laughs> Deanston, <laughs> and he's having a wee laugh at me. I've actually got a really nice comment in here. I'm going to read you Jim Ingram's Whiskey Novice. I always had the pleasure of hanging out with Jim on his channel on Monday night, and they had a great night as well. Uh, Jim is saying, um, uh, Happy days. Regarding my whiskeys, good and bad of the year, I've seen some incredible samples of some outstanding whiskeys from, in, from within this community a huge amount of which came from within this very Patreon group, and I can, can't can thank them enough. Absolutely, it's, it's a wonderful, if you are exchanging samples, make sure you're doing it legally, of course, make sure that you're packaging it properly and you're not sending it across borders where it's not permitted. Just please be careful when you're doing that. Um, but yes, absolutely, it's very generous and it's a great way for you to explore without having to spend too much. Trade some of your wee samples for some uh, someone else has. Sometimes don't even ask what they have. Don't pick from a list. Just have them recommend. It, it would surprise you, honestly. Um, early into lockdown, completely out of the blue, my wife and I received a parcel stating, this will keep your spirits up. It was a bottle of fancy gin and a bottle of Glen Scotia double cask sent by our brother-in-law in Edinburgh. We were both nearly greeting. Um, the translation, both nearly crying. I probably don't need to translate that. And he's saying, with my wife on furlough and me out of work, it was such a great gift. And I couldn't believe how good that Glen Scotia was when I opened it. Fantastic, non statement whiskey, honestly, Glen Scotia double cask. A lovely whiskey made all the nicer by the way in which we came by it. Disappointments for me, he's admitting. Pretty much everything I've tasted from McMira. Just not a fan, no matter how hard I try. See you all later. Jim, please stick with Mac Mira because I'm not suggesting that if you go and spend lots of money with them, you'll find something you love, but maybe through sample exchange, maybe through um, tastings or, or, or a festival, whatever it may be, keep your eyes open. Um, all When you have this idea that you're never going to connect with a distillery, sometimes something just drops one day and you realize that it can be quite interesting. And a lot of what McMira are putting out there um, is still quite young spirit, let's be honest. How are we getting on for time? 11 o'clock. We've only got a few more minutes left before I need to crank up the quiz. I do talk a lot. I hope it's not dull for all you wonderful folk. So many of you joining tonight as well. Thank you all for your continued support. Menno is here, multi-mission Menno. He's saying, sample-wise, I'll throw in the Series 31. James Burgoyne sent me as well as the Octomore 
uh, from Anthony uh, from No 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 Dram Drinker. Uh, I wonder what samples you're talking about. Uh, if that's a sample exchange metal. Um, Series 31 from North Star Spirits was great value. It was sub 100 pounds for a 31 year old blended malt. That's where the value is. It's still malt whiskey. But that B word means that it can't command the prices that single malt can command. There's value to be had. I know that we have to get our head around the fact that it's not a single malt. But like I say, we're always trying to just keep our, our mind open that wee bit. Graham Fraser is saying, Bal Blair was always a great affordable dram, absolutely. Even the old, older vintages were affordable. Now the aged versions are well overpriced. I know they've moved from vintage. So the 1999, everything in that was a 1999 product. And maybe now if they're talking about selling an 18-year-old, not everything is 18-year-old. There's going to be older whiskey in there and that'll send the price up a wee bit but i agree with you fully that is not a good enough excuse the rebranding there was also used it was staged as an opportunity for them to increase the pricing out there we will all admit that bal Blair was potentially a wee bit undervalued it was a wee bit underpriced while it was out there as a vintage we understand but we came to love it we came to evangelize about it we came to enjoy it and then they changed the branding and took, honestly, took um, our enjoyment away. Um, that was just over a year ago that happened, and we're still talking about it now. And I have to say, I've still to buy a Bal Blair. I've been threatening to go out and buy the 12-year-old to try it, to approach it, spend a bit of time with it, but I've not done it yet. There's so many other things I want to spend my money on, quite honestly. Let's talk about that topic. Let's, let's bring up this whiskey, which is remarkable. I don't want to use this as a protest whiskey. I don't want to use, I've done enough. I've used this as an example whiskey enough times now. This is Glen Goyne's Teapot Dram, only available at a distillery, but with lockdown, of course, you can buy it online and it's available in a lot more places now. This is batch seven. Batch five and batch six was 90 pounds and I felt that was fair. It was kind of single digit age statement whiskeys, you know, kind of eight years to 11 years, that kind of age. Batch seven's got some 14 year old in there, we believe made it a wee bit more expensive, understandably. Um, it's a unique style of whiskey, honestly. This is young, bold, um, really, really engaging whiskey. I mean, fantastic liquid. You can't pour this for everyone because it's very powerful. It's high ABV. But as an example of its style, it's difficult to match, honestly. Glen Farkless 105 doesn't touch it. It's a different thing. Even Aberlour Abuna is a different thing altogether. This is a much smaller batch thing. There's only maybe five, six casks goes into each batch of this. At £90 a bottle, I was an evangelist and I was expecting the price to hit £100, honestly. But this batch seven came out at 120 What's worse is that we heard about a brand ambassador talking about how it should actually be going out there at £150. But that was not because this was £150 worth of whiskey. It was because the market would potentially stand paying £150 for it. That frustrates me deeply. I understand that we're talking about businesses and they need to make money and they'll make money any way they can. And they certainly don't want to see their peers and competitors making much more margin than they do. But that's a short term game. I used to go out and buy teapot dram and I'd drain it and finish it. And I would go out and buy another one. And I would recommend that somebody else did the same and they would go out and buy another one. And at 90 pounds a bottle, it became a very compelling thing. Something that I would evangelize about and some something that I would pour happily and enjoy and not care about it disappearing because I could go back and buy another one at 90 pounds for as long as the batch lasted honestly look at this this is better than batch six this is honestly a better batch of the teapot drum batch seven than batch six but look that's not because I'm not enjoying it it's because it's become an expensive bottle for me now I am preserving this People are not going to buy as much as they did when it was £90. Don't charge what the market will stand. Don't be tempted. And I'm sorry to use the teapot dram, honestly, to make an example of that. I'm seeing it everywhere. There are literally hundreds of whiskies being released right now that this is happening. Independent bottlers are just 
is much to blame now. We as a community need to work together to work out where the value is, who's bringing the value, where are the good ones. More often than not, you're going to find yourselves looking at less sexy distilleries, more under the radar distilleries for those uh, fantastic, remarkable epiphanies, perhaps. Maybe you're going to find yourself looking at things on offer or perhaps blended malts, as I've talked about tonight. The value will continue to be out there. And we need to, as a community, take our focus away from where people are being charged what the market will stand and put our money in places where there is still value. Because it's the only way that we are going to be able to teach people that they just can't continually reach in and empty our wallets for us. It's our decision to spend our money where we want. And I think that things get a wee bit out of hand. The Langoyne Teapot Dram is very, very carefully put together. It's agonised over. It's a very small amount of casks. It's a very unique product. I swallowed my criticisms and I went out and I bought a bottle of Teapot Dram because I want to have it there. £120. I was tenderised and I paid it. But now it's precious liquid. And it's not going to be drunk the way that the previous batches were. I'm going to be a lot more careful with it. So I wonder how long the strategy will work for people that charge um, the higher prices. Whiskey won't be quaffed as eagerly as it has in the past. Ellswood is asking what I was going to say about Ardbeg Black. I don't chase Ardbeg special editions. I don't chase any of them. If somebody's willing to send me samples of them and things, I always enjoy them. But I'm going to leave the Ardbeg special re releases, committee releases, and uh, their annual special release for the folk that are really into their Ardbegs and love them. Oftentimes, Ardbeg bring out a spectacular release. Dark Cove has become legendary. Black has been well received as well. And over the years, there's been other really, really good ones as well. I think they're probably charging the maximum that they can charge. I don't think it's ridiculous for the widespread release. Committee release can get expensive in a lot of markets, um, but it's not for me. Helen, the reason I was going to man mention it is because I think you you had sent, um, you had mentioned it, yes. You said, great impromptu topic, early doors in their whiskey year, but we have to say our big black is our standout dram so far. These are your words, Helen, of course. Absolutely stunning. Looking forward to seeing if the rest of the whiskey year can top this. That's all you need, is to have that experience with that bottle of whiskey, and you know it's been worth it. It's really spoken to you. It's been a real epiphany for you. It's been a remarkable whiskey for you this year. Even Ardbeg fans seem to be quite happy with Ardbeg Black. Shane is saying, I am lucky my local store only stocks whiskey they feel is priced for the quality. I have to say, specialist retailers tend to follow that route. They are very much looking for that. Um, and, and it's even, even if it's not, you just have a discussion with the people. And once folk understand that you like your whiskey, you know what you like, um, they'll lead you in that direction. Um, and you, you start to know yourself when the wool's getting pulled over your eyes a wee bit and things are a bit pricey. Bill Monteith is saying, my struggle is having a lack of opportunity here in Oklahoma to sample before I buy, so I feel sometimes I miss out because of price risk ratio. The only thing I can suggest, and I know that it's difficult in the States sh shipping samples, finding local clubs or whatever. Um, Bill, I know it's difficult. I know that there's maybe not clubs near you, maybe start a club. Certainly reach out to people that you know are maybe going to be local. And if you want me to shout out Bill Monteith, who's in Oklahoma, if there's anybody near Bill in Oklahoma, for example, that wants to hook up with Bill, you can contact uh, me and I'll be happy to connect you both or I'm happy to support that kind of thing happening anywhere it may be. It's been pretty successful up to now and there are genuinely there are grassroots clubs happening through this community and I think that's a fantastic thing to be happening. Doc in Germany is saying the new Bimber single casks RRP 95 euros are offered for 400 to 700 euros on whiskey base. People are mad. Bimber is fabulous whiskey. Don't get me wrong, it's the new but it's the new thing in town. It's Bimber is England's daft mill, let's be honest. And they deserve it. They deserve, they've put a lot of effort into making a fantastic product and I have not sipped a single Bimber that's been anything other than honestly remarkable. 
but it's arguably not 95 euro whiskey. And some people are willing to pay 400 euro for it. Fantastic. It's not for us. Daft Mill is suddenly not for us. And that's heartbreaking because I know that the producers, the whiskey makers themselves, made it for us. Made it to be enjoyed, shared, drunk, talked about in very positive ways. But I guarantee you the people that are paying 400 euros for a bottle are not opening it. They're putting it in a cupboard and there'll be a day in the future that that's going to come out of that cupboard again, along with every other bottle that's been treated in the same way. What's going to happen to the price then? Us, as drinkers, will hopefully one day be able to take advantage of that. And the day has not completely disappeared for us. There will be a day in the future, I hope, that we will be able to engage with the Bimbers and the Daft Mills and various other um, whiskies that's been pushed out of our, our, our reach. It's just the way of it but there will always be whiskey experiences to have. We don't need to chase those. Roy Evans is here, great to have you, Roy. He's saying, I patched the teapot because seven was 30% larger, but the price uh, was also 30% higher, just taking the rip out of things. Exactly, that's why I've, I've touched on it. I start to feel bad that I start to beat Glen Goyne over the head. I love Glen Goyne. I love, love Glen Goyne. I, I owe Glen Goyne a lot in my whiskey journey. Genuinely, genuinely do. And their 21-year-old remains one of the most remarkable good value whiskies out there, especially for what it is. And 21-year-old, naturally coloured, ex-sherry cask whiskey for floats around 100 to 120 pounds. And it's remarkably elegant. Always a winner. Always a showstopper. It's always a great one to make somebody feel like a VIP when they come to your house and you pour them one of those. But I have to agree with Roy. Um, that was, the, the batch was much higher this time as well. They, they used a couple of extra casks. They used some older stock in there as well to fortify things a wee bit. Um, it's interesting, the 59.9% ABV is interesting to me. Listen, there are arguments, and they can justify that it's £120 whiskey, but I want them to think about the long-term thing. When, when's the next, is the next release going to be 140 Is it going to creep to be 150 Because it's not a quaffing whiskey then. To be enjoyed by enthusiasts, it's going to be ones that people start to become really precious about. And I don't think that was the intended um, market for Teapot Dram. However, as long as Glen Goyne can sell it, who cares? For us as enthusiasts and drinkers, we think about things from a slightly different perspective. Whiskey Novice Jim is saying, sure, the wee beastie was on Amazon for £165. Yeah, let's start beating up our beg now. What is the problem? Is, is the COVID thing so bad? And sorry to mention the, 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 the C word. I think that's the first time on a VPUB you've heard me say that word. Is things so bad out there right now that, that our beg can't get wee beastie released to the people that live in the country where it was made. I mean, we are looking at a mid-July release now for, people in the States have had it for weeks and weeks. People in Europe had it months ago. Why, why is this happening? Why are people charging 165 pounds for a 40 pounds bottle of whiskey? Because they're impatient. Whiskey has become ludicrous in so many ways. But this is a, the VPUB is about, um, community and positivity and uh, keeping things um, light. Stevie is saying, just picked up a bottle of Wee Beastie for, for under $50. You're in the States, Steve. Peter Hunt is saying, so I suppose we need to find the next teapot dram for enthusiasts before the collectors and flippers can get a hold of it. Any ideas? I was hopeful that Fingal's Cut, um, the Macri Moore from Aaron Fingal's Cut would be able to be a, a kind of similar prospect. And it is a good whiskey. Um, it's not teapot dram, it's it's a different take. Um, I'm always on the lookout. And if, you know, teapot dram is fairly unique in scope. Honestly speaking. And that's why I um, admitted that in a recent VPUB and, and confessed to everybody that despite my petulance and complaining about it, I did actually go out and pay £120 for a bottle. And uh, uh, Charlie's in. Uh, Shimini Charlie, uh, Kino got saying even Norway got the wee beastie. Aye, but we don't have it yet. Uh, Kim Bryant is saying, not me, unfortunately, my bimber is almost gone. That sherry bimber released in Selfridge is sold out immediately. I think through Sevi, through the good grace of Sevi, I think he managed to get me one of those sherry bimbers. Um, my, uh, 
X Bourbon, uh, Alistair Gray, and a few other of you guys found places that were selling the X Bourbon Bourbon Bimber, but I didn't buy a replacement. It's one of the remarkable whiskies for me. Honestly, look at what's left in this bottle. I love this stuff. I genuinely love it, and I loved the recharge as well. I thought it was a fantastic whiskey. Um, uh, I didn't buy another one because I thought, you know, I've got a lot of whiskey already. Let's leave it on the shelf for somebody who's actually not going to be able to buy a single bottle. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, you know, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to take the last dram out of that and, and wish that I had another one. However, £65 was the right price for that whiskey. And if it starts getting more expensive than that or I need to start chasing it or getting a, some kind of competitive fight to get hold of it, I'm just going to step back. It's There's lots of other whiskey experiences out there. Uh, you don't need to really get involved in that. And part of a community, if you really want to try that, there's more than enough folk out there willing to give you a wee sample, I'm sure. I'm one of them. Uh, second, uh, Kenth is in as well. Good to see you, my friend, on House of Malt. You can get the Glengoyne Teapot Dram for £115 and retail outlets £5 cheaper than uh, I paid uh, as a distillery exclusive. Willie's in, Willie Dolly is saying, so what's your shout for good value budget, 60 to £90? Pounds? I've already mentioned that, Willie. I would say Glendronic Revival, I would say is a good one. Uh, 60 to £90, pounds, Aaron 18, I think is good. I think Aaron 18 is probably about five or two expensive. I would like to see Aaron occupying that space that they always did for value. I think with the 18 year old, they've pushed it up a wee bit more expensive. But when you taste it, I think that's got a lot to do with the whiskies that they're using to make that the new branded uh, new bottling of Aaron 18, I think is a favorite whiskey of mine. I got through it far too quickly. And it's not a style that I would normally chase. I loved it. Let me show you this whiskey. There's a couple of remarkable whiskeys here that's still sitting about there, the teapot I've spoken about. I've got a couple more that I need to share with you. I'm just going to get them out of the way because I went to the trouble of taking them out of the cabinet. Then I can go on with the quiz and I can invite the boys back in that are sitting in the background and we can have a wee quiz eh, to finish things off. This is a remarkable whiskey. Loch Lomond are still under the radar and oftentimes are still bringing out great value product. This is expensive for a 12 year old, honestly speaking. I will say it's 46%, it's, it's, it's presented exactly how we wanted it, want it to be presented. Why did I pay 55 pounds for a 12 year old Loch Lomond? Because this is the wine yeast Loch Lomond. I managed to get this at, uh, online at Robbie's Drams. Um, it's a retailer here in the west of Scotland uh, and down in Ayrshire. £55 plus delivery, uh, I that was one night. <laughs> so I finished the sample that was given to me by Michael Henry of this, the, the yeast, you see the rest of them over there on the cabinet. You might remember when Michael was on, this is the dram of the, 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 out of those samples that I tasted that blew me away. I was very, very keen for him to release it. Eventually it's been released as... Uh, to celebrate the Open uh, Championship that didn't uh, happen. So this has um, ended up being released, uh, Be There in Spirit. Uh, it's basically commemorating an Open Championship that never happened. You can see, this is just from this week, I'm enjoying this. £55 for a 12-year-old Loch Lomond is expensive, but this is a special take on Loch Lomond, and it's unique, and yes, it's remarkable. If you pay £55 on this Loch Lomond and you decide, Roy, I don't like this, talk to me. I'll buy the rest of it from you. This is a very interesting thing. This is a producer who's decided to talk about yeast variety, to put it on the label and to bring it out there and release it for feedback. I believe there was all, also an SMWS release uh, using a wine release as well that went down very well. This is not the type of whiskey you would recommend to everybody. But to an enthusiast that's looking for something that's a, a, a wee bit different, a wee bit engaging, this is great. Lovely texture, effervescent, it fizzes on the palate. The fruitiness is there. It's one of the fruitiest Loch Lomans I can remember trying. Uh, it's a lighter, fresher, more Moorish version of Loch Lomond. And uh, this is a remarkable dram. I'm very happy to have this. And if it's easy for me to happen upon another one, if one comes past uh, my way, I'll probably buy a backup of it because I'm not sure that Loch Lomond are going to continue to bring that. I don't know how much they have of mature stock, honestly. 
Um, as a blend recommendation, this bottle is empty. It's going to repeat, appear in a recycled review soon. But this is a fairly inexpensive but high quality blend from Inverhouse that doubles wonderfully as a sipper. Light, top note heavy, very bright white fruit, tropical, easy to sip and drink. Yes, it's 40%. Yes, it's typical blend fodder. But if you're going to have a blend in your cabinet, if you're going to have one, consider this. This is Cato's blend. And I felt that this was a cracker of a blend. Go as far to say a remarkable blend, honestly. Not too expensive either. More expensive, you would have to say it's kind of mid to semi premium uh, as far as blends go. There's no age statement on there. But honestly, I thought it was really good. Um, and finally, I'm going to go over to one of my favourite distilleries in terms of where it was in my whiskey journey. It's uh, the distillery that's responsible for turning me into the geek that I am today. And this I held sealed for far too long. I picked this up in, I think it was 2018 I picked it up. It's a 2017 distillery only release from uh, Lagavulin. Now being Diageo, they don't go into chapter and verse telling us what's in this, but it's very sherried for Lagavulin on the on the on the palette is 54.1 percent bottled in 2017 you'll probably pay over the odds for this now i don't remember what i paid for this it was around the hundred pounds mark of that order it's non-age statement and i wondered why i'd bought it i must have tried it at the time and liked it and bought it and then forgotten that i'd liked it but scott monroe and i opened this scott uh, told a story when we were sharing a dram together uh, fairly recently he opened his and I opened mine at the same time, and I'm very glad I did. This is Lagavulin 16 in profile, but at cast strength. That's It's kind of in that, in that neighbourhood. If you've got this around, get it open. You'll love it. You're going to enjoy it. Forget about the fact that it's not an age statement. Just forget about it. It's good. It's not spirit-driven. It's just a good, good, nice Lagavulin experience. And I'm very glad to have opened this recently as well. That hasn't been me that's, that's drank at all. I've been sharing this one <laughs> out recently. The king of overpriced whiskies are the Japanese, says Glenn Anderson, uh, buying me a wee dram. Glenn, this looks like a new name. Thank you very much for the dram. Nice to welcome you in. And I would have to say I agree. I'm going to pour a wee dram of that Lagavulin actually tonight because I think it would be a lovely dram. To share with you. Now I appreciate a lot of the whiskies I've been sharing with you tonight are not easy to get hold of. Some of them are small batch independent bottlings or 2017 distillery only releases and things. Um, but the, the idea behind it is to keep our mind open a wee bit that these are not all single malts. These are not all premium fear of missing out uh, uh, products. All of the whiskies I've, I've shared with you tonight I think I haven't had a huge clamour for them, but they're, they are whiskies that's made me kind of had a pause, stop and think moment. Anyway, Glenn, thank you so much for your drama, friend. Cheers. Before I roll into the quiz, I'll read out a couple. Going to go late again. Read out a couple of your uh, quotes. Blair Conrad, Jimmy Legg is saying, the simple bourbon matured, spirit driven greatness of the Glenn Cadam 10 year old. I, I agree, Jimmy, absolutely. And the complex, when given time, share a matured greatness of Springbank 15-year-old. Nothing to talk about with Springbank as well, absolutely. Although 18, 21 starts getting quite expensive, but 15 and below is very uh, good value, very high quality, real integrity bottlings. You can't say enough about Springbank, honestly. My problem is, is that sometimes, especially in Scotland, they're difficult to get a hold of. And uh, Jimmy is saying that Springbank 15-year-old has been one of the whiskies that's made 2020 great so far. Similar story from Marcus, Max Kreitner. He's saying, for me, my epiphany bottles were Springbank Green 13, Sherry Cast Matured, very balanced and extremely Moorish. And the second was the Kilhoman Ambora, which was very drinkable, very good balance as well, uh, and Moorish as hell. I have no real duds. But a bottle I find hard to connect with is my Bladnick 10-year-old. I found this interesting, Max. It isn't bad, but it isn't something I want to pour a second dram of. There are Bladnick 10-year-olds out there, the old dark green label and the sherry uh, cask version of Bladnick 10 was an absolute showstopper for me. 
There are lots of Blad Nooks out there that are kind of inconsistent. But I've got a signature vintage Blad Nook through there that I keep for special occasions, not because it's expensive or wonderful, or, but it's just very, when I'm in the mood for that, very light, floral, uh, as uh, Blair Conrad was talking about, that kind of simple ex-bourbon cask style. That Blad Nook is, is a cracker in my cabinet. I love it. Uh, Alan McLaughlin is saying the good. Glenn Danson Midgey sent me a sample of the Anuk 24, and it was a game changer for me. And maybe the oldest whiskey I've, I've tasted so far. I think, Alan, I think you're in tonight. Um, and certainly set the bar high for me for whiskies of the combination of price and age. And it also inspired me to keep looking to see if I can discover something equivalent of a similar age and price point. It's a dram that requires patience. Absolutely, it's very complex, that Anuk 24. And he's saying, and the whole world slows down as you enjoy it. Sounds amazing, Alan. And again, the price of that Anok 24, it's not, it's a lot of money. It's it's 120 pounds, I think, but it's a single malt, a 24-year-old single malt from a from a good quality distillery, and it's presented well, and it's not going to be around forever. Inverhouse, I've got track record now. We've talked about Bal Blair or Pulteney of rebranding, and we're seeing a lift in prices. It's only a matter of time before potentially Anok sees the same treatment. Oh, and it's saying the bad. Someone who's still ill in their whiskey journey, I've uh, went through the usual steps of trying everything in the supermarket, one of which was the Bomore 12. If I remember rightly, this might have been my first ever peated whiskey. And as I first tasted it, I thought it wasn't good, bad, but the finish on this whiskey to me seems to have an ashy taste and something like dried cigar paper sticking to my lips with no moisture. It really put me off. Maybe you're tasting caramel. Maybe it's caramel colouring. I often get on whiskies, uh, and a Bowmore 12 is one of them. There are other uh, producers out there that give me the same thing, that the finish is very off-putting. It's acrid. It's like burnt sugar. It's like saccharin. It's, it's not enjoyable. And I get what you're talking about with that kind of tobacco thing, uh, Alan and the uh, I. Some whiskies are remarkable, uh, for less than positive reasons. Bamore is one of the legendary Scotch malt whiskey producers. Honestly, the, some of the releases from Bamore in the past have collectors going crazy for them. The Bamores that we're enjoying in modern times have a bit of revision, a bit of work to do, I think, honestly. Don't, like the theme of tonight if has been anything, it's to stay open-minded. Don't turn your back on an independent bottling of Bamore. Some of them can be absolutely fantastic um but the official releases from Bamore, i i just i was embarrassed when i did the tour of isla earlier in the year because i, I didn't have a Bamore in a collection like mine or literally hundreds of bottles i didn't have a Bamore to share and that tells a tale lindsay Holman is saying i enjoy spring bank 12 so much i cannot keep it in the house i just had a little walk in the rain out to get myself a dram seems right for tonight's show. Fantastic, Lindsay. have to say that there are drums and bottles that you have in your collection that are very difficult to reach past. Those would qualify definitely as remarkable whiskies. Tim Donnerpass Whiskey is saying that Glen Scotia 2006 peated cast single bourbon cast strength is so good it's hard to get back to the 15. Glen Scotia are continually bringing out more and more surprising whiskies. Um, the same company, uh, or the same blender, honestly, Michael Henry, he was on the VPUB earlier in the year. Same guy that was responsible for this 12-year-old uh, Loch Lomond. Glen Scotia are doing great things just now. The Victoriana I've got through there, I'm really, really enjoying. I find it remarkable. And people talk about that Vin Victoriana not being as good as the first release that came out. And it is a bit different, potentially, but it's still a wonderful whiskey. Expensive for a non-age statement right up until you engage with it and understand what it is, what it's intended to be. David Keogh is here, good to have you, Dio. David, he's saying, open both Loch Lomond wine yeast expressions tonight. Interesting comparison, notes to follow at some point in the future. Tell me, David, if you're getting that effervescence, that fizz, that lovely, lovely, I, I know I'm a sucker for texture when it comes to malt whiskey, I absolutely love it. Uh, but I found it very much part of that Loch Lomond experience. Cheers, everyone, I'm gonna get the quiz on the go now. Two hundred and fifty-six of you still in? I think we reached up to close to three hundred tonight. It's wonderful attendance right up and through in the summer months. Usually the summer months quieten down. I know these are exceptional times, um, 
But thank you all for your support. Anybody that's leaving tonight that doesn't want to stay for the quiz, I'll say thank you. Now you don't have to. If you've never tried an Aquavita quiz at the end before, you might have a bit of fun. It's obviously always multiple choice, and it is intended just to be a bit of fun. You're only playing against yourself. And uh, every question, I try to have some kind of thought or a uh, reason behind it, something that might maybe make you curious. Uh, uh, to understand a wee bit more. Anyway, let's get the quiz on the go. I've got the wrong date here. It says 2nd of July, but no worries. You know it's the 9th of July, don't you? I'm going to welcome in Sid, Matthew, and Kevin. Give me a thumbs up, boys, if you're all in a comfortable place to come in. There's Sid, Matthew, multi haggis muncher, and cousin Kevin. Are you all well? Yep. Are your ears bleeding from my monologuing? <laughs> So, I'm just scarred. You're ready still, to play a wee bit of the quiz at the end. Yes, always. You still, you still upset, Kevin? Still upset? Oh, ma massively. It's just a, a fake smile on my face as we speak, but it's fine. It's a game. It's only a game. It's um, we'll get over it. I tell you what, when lockdown lifts and you're able to come over here and we were able to sit around that dining room table and enjoy a wee curry together, like the old days, right? I love that. We'll play yeah. a few wee games of uh, is it a space side? And I'll do a Jim Ingram on you, whisking all this. <laughs> I'll keep playing, I'll keep playing until you win a game. That's <laughs> when I hung out with Jim on Monday night, that's exactly what we did. And Jim was able to catch me out on Monday night. So it will happen, it'll come to you. Sid, what do you normally score on a quiz? Anywhere between six and six ten. Eight, nine. No, I have had ten, I think twice. Yes. You're, you're, uh, the scoring's quite high. Matthew, you you do quite well on the quiz as well normally, don't you? Usually, I think uh, last quiz I was on, I did really poor. I think... Uh, I think a, a really bad score, so, yeah. You only know if you know, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. Kevin, I think you're all over the place. Sometimes you admit to a, an awful um, showing, but often you do quite well. And usually that kind of could do better. You know that report card I got when I was a kid? Could do better. Potential is there. I was always, I've always got that in me, so. Oh, always, always room for improvement. Always room <laughs> for improvement. Okay, it's not the 2nd of July. Don't let the mistake uh, fool you. We'll go on to the quiz, and I wish everybody the best of luck. I'll try and keep up with you guys in the chat as well. I uh, uh, feel like I've not given you the attention, the attention you deserve tonight. Scogs is saying, if the VPUB ever had a meet-up and everyone here attended, we'd have to search for a pub big enough. Scogs that almost happened in Germany. Uh, Doc McAllen Fenner Rare was struggling to find places to fit us all in together. Unfortunately, uh, events conspired against us, and that's, uh, that couldn't happen. But these things will happen in the future. There will be a time that we can get together and raise a glass. Don't worry about it, my friend. I hope that you're going to be there. Uh, Jimmy Legg is saying, Kevin seems to be a man I may like. He is. He's a good lad, Jimmy. He is. I like, uh, I like Jimmy. <laughs> we, all, <laughs> we all like Jimmy Legg. <laughs> there, Conrad. And Whiskey Novice is saying, I slept well on Monday night, Roy, after after finally beating me as uh, is it a space side. Well done, Jim. Well done. Okay, everybody, good luck. Question one. During its 100 years, Imperial was infamously closed longer than it was operational. Now demolished, what has taken its place? What stands on the site of the old Imperial distillery, which was finally shut in 1998? Is it A, a new distillery? Is it B, a company making stills? Or is it C, housing, a restaurant, and a pub? The site of Imperial... Now, there's a remarkable thing for all of you folk out there that worry that you'll never get your hands on a Port Ellen or a Brora or whatever. Imperial is out there. It's long closed, closed in 1998. All the whiskey out there is uh, becoming very, very mature. It can often have a bit of a waxy lick to it. I've got an Imperial here that is very much like that, it's similar to an almost climacy thing. It's famed for its cream soda flavor. I get that completely. Imperial is a good, affordable closed distillery. Um, and it's one that you can still buy now and honestly drink and enjoy. Sid, do you know this one? I think it's A. You think it's a new distillery? Matthew, what would you say? Yeah, uh, I, I know the answer to this. I've, I've been up there, so... Good, good. And Kevin, are you guessing, or do you know? No, A, I remember reading it in the book. Is it down uh, Yes, it is. Yeah. Absolutely, and the folk in the in the 
in the in the community and the chat and the lounge tonight, absolutely uh, the majority of them know it to be Delmonic as well. They built a brand new distillery, so um, Imperial is in some ways alive and well, um, but they're not going to be producing the same thing. Uh, Delmonic is a completely different animal, but they have uh, built a new distillery on the site there. So if you answer, they give yourself a point. Question two is North Star Spirits Spica or Spica, I think it actually is the pronunciation. Uh, Spica is an occasional release of what? What is Spica from North Star Spirits? Is it a blended malt scotch whiskey? Is it an undisclosed Highland malt? Or is it a blended scotch whiskey? What is Spica from North Star Spirits? Jesus uh, Arevalo, that looks like a new name, Jesus. Nice to welcome you in, my friend. Matt E is in tonight. Andrew Pierce, another new name. Ross Mashburn, wonderful to see you in, uh, Ross. Uh, Erwin Laranaga is in as well, Erwin, fantastic. Multi-Haggis Muncher is punching his answers into the chat as well. Kevin, are you guessing here? I'm, I'm guessing. I'm going, I'm going B, I think. Okay, I and, no idea. and Sid, what do you think? I'm between A and C. I'll go C because I think it's A. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, Spiker is actually blended scotch. Blended scotch. Yeah. I heard from Sevi the Alchemist recently that they're releasing a 40-year-old for £125. Wow. I haven't seen it with my own eyes yet, but I think that would be one of those remarkable things. You're able to enjoy a 40-year-old whiskey for that kind of money. It would be amazing if Northstar did that. And I would love it to be a good 40-year-old blend as well at that price. Is it asking for too much? Probably. <laughs> Matthew, you got that right, absolutely. And there's a there's a bottle, an example of their 29-year-old that was quite celebrated. Uh, people seemed to enjoy that. It was good value as well. Three, bottled and bond. Originally de uh, designed to determine the quality of a spirit as well as streamline tax collection, was first introduced in... Now, I know you want one of these answers to be America. <laughs> Is it A, 1849, B, 1860, or C, 1897? Bit of an asshat question, um, but I guess, I suppose, thinking about it for a wee while, you might have a chance of getting this. Bottled and Bond is 50% ABV. Um, this was the idea in order to um, uh, kind of stop some of the, uh, let's say, not very desirable practices that was happening in whiskey where it was being thinned out by things that was being bottled and diluted with other things. A thing that happened in Scotch whiskey as well back in the 19th century before they took steps to change it. But Bottled and Bond became this marker quality, 50% ABV. Um, but when did America put that into place? Was it 1849, 1860, or 1897? Do you, are you guys, you guys are seeing the chat, right? No. Uh, I've only got my iPad on, so. I Graham Fraser it. is suggesting it's a banana skin. Have a guess at it, Kevin. What would you guess? For the Charles McLean book, there's something ringing a bell for late 1800s, early 19s. So I'm going to go for the latter for C, just for that fact on a whim. Any of you boys want to disagree? I'll go for B. B, Matthew? Total guess for me, C. Absolutely right, C. Unfortunately for Sid, it is. It's 1897. Um, it was late, very late in the 19th century before the whole bottled and bond thing came into place, and it's still in place now. has to be aged for four years as well, and it also made it a hell of a lot easier for them to um, collect tax on it as well. There were incentives for the producers that were willing to go ahead and support the bottled and bond scheme. It's quite an interesting wee part in American history as well. Lots of people on three out of three, Floyd, Glenn Anderson, um, Erwin, Eric Cunliffe, quite a lot of people on 3 out of 3 so far. Question 4. Compass Box Spice Tree was controversial in its first release due to what kind of additional staves? We know that it was controversial because um, Compass Box were taking this blended malt and they were marrying it in casks with internal staves. We know that that's not allowed now. It was seen as an additive. They got around it. But let's ask, what kind of staves were they? Were they toasted French oak staves? 
Or were they heavily charred virgin oak staves? Or were they ex oloroso sherry European oak? European oak, ex oloroso, charred virgin toasted French. Just raise your hand if you know this one, boys. <laughs> Matthew, the modesty, the wee, the wee hand coming up there quietly, of course. Absolutely. Are you guessing, Kevin? Yeah, I would just A seems the one that's far out, so I would just go with that because it seems so different. Okay. Sid, what would you think? I've got A as well. Matthew, tell the boys what is it? I think it's A as well. Absolutely. It's uh, toasted French oak. And the way they got around it is they used uh, the, the barrel ends, the head ends, um, is toasted French oak. Um, so spice tree is still out there. It's still intact. They're just doing it in a different way. Well done if you if you answered A as most of you, absolutely most of you uh, did. If we go into the picture question, um, this is a part of a series of, question, of images, sorry, that was sent through to me. Fascinating images, all from a book that was published in the 1970s. But I want to ask, obviously, uh, this picture that he sent me through. What distillery are we looking at here? Are we looking at A, Tobermory on Mull? Are we looking at B, Edra Dower in the Southern Highlands? Or are we looking at C, Glen Turret? What distillery are we looking at there? Obviously, a wee distillery. Tobermory. Edra Dur, Glen Turret. I predict 10 out of 10s tonight. I really do. The chat are confident. They're doing really, really well. Sid, are you confident? Not a ah. 10. They've got one wrong. <laughs> are you confident about this one? Are you confident about this picture? No, I think I'll probably go for B. Peter Hunt is saying, glad you've put them to good use. I'll exempt myself from this question. You think it's Edward or Matthew, would you agree? I've been to two of the distillers there. Uh, it looks as much like Edward Dower as I remember, so I put Edward Dower as well. Kevin thinks Edward Dower as well. Yeah. Boys, well done, absolutely, it is Edward Dower. I've got a more modern picture. I was trying to find one from a similar angle there to show the, re the revisions to some of the buildings, but the bridge across the river... Uh, the old kiln uh, style roof that's up there, the little kind of uh, houses all look very, very similar. They've just been painted and look a bit better. But I want to ask, how do you think they took this picture back in the day? This looks uh, late 19th century, early 20th century. It looks like it was taken by a, by a drone though, right? <laughs> <laughs> up high. How did they get up that high? Um, I couldn't find a picture that was from a similar angle, which is really interesting. But there you go. B, Edward Dower, absolutely. Question six. Scotch is now an industry worth over four billion. But what is Kentucky urban worth Horrible. by comparison? And this was a contribution from Bud Jenkins. He sent me through a little fact sheet on Kentucky bourbon. It is an asshat question, but I find it super interesting. Four billion for Scotch, but is bourbon, Kentucky bourbon specifically, Worth A, $2 billion, B, $4 billion, or C, $8 billion plus Kentucky bourbon. Des has already thrown the asshat emojis at me. Thank you, Des. I agree with you. I think it is a bit of an asshat, but tell me if you don't imagine the answer is going to be quite curious, right? Kevin, I know you're guessing, but you have to commit. Tell me what you're guessing. I would say C because there's always an, there's so much bourbon barrels just kicking around for a Scotch market to get. So it wouldn't be similar because it's cheaper. So I would go for eight billion plus for that fact that my guess it's going to be more. Okay, Matthew, I know you're guessing as well. I can see it. I guess B. Yeah. Your guess, sorry. Yeah, B. B four billion and said. I guess C as well. C. Unfortunately for Matthew, the boys are right. Eight billion plus. Um, pretty massive. It's all from one state, but it's a huge industry. Uh, despite the setbacks in its history, uh, eight billion dollars plus of an industry. It's quite. Uh, so when we say that you know Scotch is uh, you know king of the throne or king of the world whiskies or whatever, 
Um, that just kind of puts it into scale. That's just from one state. That's just Kentucky bourbon. Can I just bow out now because I'm on five? I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'll take. It, I'll just take it and leave. Pass mark achieved. Well done. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Question seven, what happened in 1823 that changed Scotch whiskey forever? You might remember this question from a week ago, uh, but you're on warning that it is a slightly different uh, question. What happened in 1823 that changed Scotch whiskey forever? Was it the Excise Act or was it phylloxera hitting Europe or was it the invention of the coffee still? That's the exact same three answers that was there for a very similar question a week ago. Graham Horner is on six out of six. <laughs> Graham, if you ever play golf, you will know that you're doing a dangerous thing. He's on six out of six and he's saying it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. You're going to stand up on the tee, it'll be maybe this question, maybe the, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, and you'll blow up. Don't count the chickens until they've hatched. Would you know, do you, are you guessing, boys? Do you know what this is? I'm going uh, I'm thinking, I think uh, B was a bit later, but um, I, I would say A would be my guess on this. Anybody want to yes. disagree with Kevin? No. And uh, the chat are absolutely spot on as well. 1823 saw the Excise Act, the first time um, that licences were granted for legal distillation right across Scotland. And it meant that uh, Glenlivet famously was the first one to, to take them up on it. And it meant that uh, everything was changed from then on and everything became a lot more official. Lots of seven out of sevens, lots of happy barflies in the lounge tonight. I'm very glad. Less asshats and angry emojis being thrown at me. Question eight, McAllen has an incredible 36 stills, but how few did it have as recently as 1964? Let's go back to McAllen in 1964. It's only been a brand for 40 years, remember, back in the 60s and indeed the 70s, they would have been making fillers contract stock for, for everybody else going into blends. So how many stills did they have back then? Two, four, or six. 1964. Now I have to say that uh, I'm asking you to kind of stretch your thinking a little bit here and think about McAllen specifically. If you know a certain fact about McAllen, that'll make it obvious. I don't know if that's helping you at all. But think about that. 36 stills at McAllen because they're making single malt product. It doesn't go into blends anymore. Back in the 60s, they were only making fodder, filler for contracts, filler for blends. And they had either A, two stills, B, four stills, or C, six stills. Sid. I'll get to C. Matthew. I answered B, but uh, after I wrote my answer in the chat, I, a light bulb went off in my head, and I think it's C, actually. And Kevin? Oh, I've got, I've got no idea. I'll go with the, I'll go with the team on this one. I'll go see. I'll join that wee bus. McAllen famously uses one wash still to feed two spirit stills, so it's got to be in multiples of three. Um, so it is six. The answer is six. Back in 1964, McAllen only had six stills. Now they've got 36. Quite amazing. They've famously got tiny little uh, spirit stills. Question nine, the Whiskey Exchange was founded in 1999, but from what? What was the Whiskey Exchange founded from? Was it A, an off license? Was it B, a whiskey club? Or C, a wine club? This is another surprise to me when you consider that, of course, the Whiskey Exchange is very much an online business. But it's only 20, 21 years old. I don't know if, uh, if they're celebrated their... Um, they must have celebrated their 20th birthday, I guess, last year. They did a ballot for an odd big. Sorry? They did a ballot for an odd big that was released in 99, I think. For the 20th? Yeah. There you go. It's balloted odd big. I hope they, they release something that could really have everybody celebrate. Something that was much more. They, they did it at the price it was in 1999. So you got it like a £1,500 old bag. For Excellent. Eight. Excellent. Now I know why it was balloted. 
Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. I have to say, take your hat off to the Whiskey Exchange. I can't find a website that has the range and choice that they have. Um, Master of Malt can occasionally be cheaper on expression from here to here. But if you're just, if you, if the chances of Whiskey Exchange having it in stock is, it seems to be much higher to me. Um, great service from Master Malt and the Whiskey Exchange. Um, can't fault them, honestly. Still love to go along to my local producer, support locally, of course. Um, you can't have a chat <laughs> with somebody from the Whiskey Exchange. But have you any idea, Matthew? Are you guessing on this one? I'm guessing, yeah. Wine Club, I guess. See. Said. I'll go for B. It's an off license. Ah. Tiny little London off, off license called The Nest. Sukinder Singh, um, and I think it was his brother, owned it. They inherited it from their parents, um, but quickly uh, took their miniature collections and their whiskey passion to an online business. I'll show you an image of this. I love this picture. Look at this. <laughs> That is how the whiskey exchange started, the nest, in 19, uh, before they, they started in 1989. But that's where it was founded from. Quite amazing. Unlucky boys, it's the first time that you've all struck out in the same question. Going to question 10, is it an asshat question? Maybe a wee bit. The first ever recycled review in 2017. This is a kind of nod that tonight should have been the recycled review live. I will try and do it in the future. But how many 9 out of 10 score whiskey bottles did it have? I've never given a 10 out of 10 yet. I just, I don't know why. Uh, one day I will. I don't know why I've not given a 10 out of 10. Um, but uh, one of the 9 out of 10s that I, I had in the, oops, I might have given something away here. <laughs> a, what's it? Three 9 out of 10 bottles in the first ever recycled review. A long morn, a clean leash, and a mortlack. Or was it B, a long morn? And a blended malt, or was it C just a long one? A three, B two, or C one? Des is complaining that it's a banana skin and an ass hat question. Well, Des, I've just given you a wee a wee help to change it from a one in three chance to a one in two. <laughs> Glenn Anderson is having a laugh at me. Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> Ah, I just, I've worked out that people are wondering what an off-license is. It's a liquor store, um, an alcohol store, uh, wines and spirits seller. Yes, I never even considered that the UK parlance is an off-license, but it's not an international term, of course. Wow. Apologies to anybody that got that wrong because they didn't understand what an off-license was. Okay, boys, I need, to, I need a, an answer from you. Is it A3, B2, or C1? How many 9 out of 10s did I give in the first ever recycled review in 2017? I'm going for C for can't believe you still guess Tuller Barden. <laughs> Matthew. I did C as well, long one sixteen. Yeah, C. Wow. That's just for last week's video of how you were going on about it, so I think that's the, the reason. I gave a 9 out of 10 to three whiskies in my first ever recycled review. Longmorn 16 was indeed one of them, absolutely. Also, Klein Leash Cascade 687 from Signature Vintage, the legendary one. I was gutted about it. That was There was none left in the cupboard. I've managed to get some more in since. And also, uh, the Gordon McPhail Mortlack 15 license bottling, I gave it a 9 out of 10 for. And I've since changed my mind because bottles I've had since then are nowhere near a 9 out of 10. Quite a change. Uh, quite a remarkable change, honestly speaking. Um, if you are interested in recycled reviews, there's a spreadsheet that goes along with that. You can go into the spreadsheet and see the scores uh, that have um, scored all of the recycled reviewed whiskies over time. And you will notice that there's a column there for if I change my mind. It seems bizarre. Some people ask me why. But anybody that's into whiskey for long enough, I don't know if you would agree with a nod or disagree with a shake of the head, boys, but whiskey changes over time our journey changes over time we all develop we all move on our perspectives change sometimes genuinely the whiskies uh, change sometimes significantly and that's why i put that column in there because then it gives people a visual check from a, a review that's three years ago now for that long one 15 if they check the spreadsheet they see that i've marked it down 
for that reason that I've found the Mortlac uh, from GM to come off the boil a wee bit. The one I marked at that time was a pretty good one, I have to say. Final scores, are you willing to share, boys? Seven. 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 All of you on seven. Still good scores. I imagine uh, there's going to be a lot of folk in the lounge that's going to uh, have done a wee bit better than that. Let's have a look. Uh, not lots of sevens, lots of sevens. Uh, Klaus Borling is in on a nine out of ten. Good to have you, Klaus. Nice to welcome you in here. Uh, Daniel Vermas, nine out of ten. Boo, he's not happy. Too slow, nine out of ten. Alan McLaughlin on eight. Lots of good scores, though. Lots of high scores. Uh, Lassie Hjort Oatsman, that's a great name, Lassie. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing it well. Nine out of ten. Ray Bresniak and Eric Cunliffe both on eight. Hellswood, Helen and Andy on nine out of ten, but they're working as a team. They're working uh, with an advantage on their side, of course. <coughs> well done, Helen. Well, great score. Um, Tom Good is in. The one wrong. <laughs> Tom Good is Tom Good is in, and he's doing his very best Scottish impression, and he's saying balls five out of ten. <laughs> it's still a pass mark, my friend. It's still a pass mark, Tom. Um, Matt sixty nine on seven. Oh, come on, let's see. I'm looking for that emoji. I'm looking for that 10 out of 10 emoji. Somebody got a 10 out of 10 tonight. Erwin got a 10 out of 10. Congratulations, my friend. Wonderful score. Graham Horner on 9 out of 10. I'll take it and run. Great score, Graham. Absolutely. Any other 10 out of 10s? Helen has seen so close to a 10. Well done, Erwin. It looks like Erwin takes the spoils tonight. Jimmy Legg has bought me a dram. You star Blair. Thank you so much. Great fun, Roy. Is there a lock in? before the summer break. Better than a lock-in. Uh, Jimmy's referring to uh, a VPUB that I do for patrons. Better than a lock-in. I'm building some kind of concept for the Zoom thing to work. Ma Matthew, I know you were able to join on the Zoom. Said, I'm not sure if you were, if you were in on that one. Okay, I'll try and give a bit more notice for it. It was a very short notice thing. I'd love the idea to, um, can you imagine doing this with all the lounge, all the folk, and at the same time, all being on video? <laughs> That's right, but what I would do is I would have breakout rooms, and then I can jump into the breakout rooms, and there's maybe only six, eight people in each room, and I get a chance to see everybody and see what you all look like. I think that would be amazing. I'd love to do that. Um, it was just a dry run that I did a week or so ago, and it, it excited me enough to make me want to come up with a way to make it work. Charlie Keener got is saying, yeah, I can't wait for the next Zoom. I'm looking forward to it as well. And thanks for joining me for that uh, ad hoc one. And uh, Jimmy is saying, wow, great. Lee J. Brown has tried, but I couldn't work out sound, lol. We'll work it out, Lee J. We'll work it out. We'll get there in the end. Uh, Zoom, I, I think you do need to, to download a wee plugin for your browser or whatever to make it uh, work well. But you can do it on a phone. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing it. It works much, much better when you've got the real estate, when you've got the space of a big screen. Graham Young has brought me a drama as well, saying cheers to a great VPUB. We'll get details on replay. Thank you so much, Graham. Thank you for your drama. And Jimmy Legg, thank you for your generous drama. Canadian dollars coming in from Graham and Jimmy over Atlantic. Cheers, boys. Thank you. I've enjoyed this tonight. I wonder if I would have enjoyed it so much if I was sitting out in my driveway chucking bottles into a bin. I was going to use bottles that didn't really qualify for the regular recycled review uh, to share those with you. Guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for sitting around in the background. Um, thanks for playing a wee game of Is It A Space Side? Special thanks to Kevin for taking a bullet so that I didn't get grannied tonight and end up on a donut. But well done, Matthew. Well done, Sid, for winning yourself a sniper coin tonight. Um, lots of people are waiting for those sniper coins. I'll be doing a mass mailer when they finally get delivered. Thank you, boys. Stay along till the end, won't you? Cheers, Sid. All the best, my friend. Cheers, Matthew. Cheers, Kevin. Best Thank of luck you. on the channel, buddy. Cheers. <sighs> Over time again tonight. Uh, it's midnight here. Uh, thanks to everybody that stayed, especially all you guys in Europe. It's 1 a.m. in the morning for you. Uh, thank you all so much for your fantastic attendance tonight. I put this VPUB about a very short notice. I was waiting till the very end because I wasn't sure what the weather was going to do. I don't think that recycled review is going to happen next week. Next week will be the last VPUB before the summer break. I would like to have some form of collaboration there. I'm still thinking about what to do there. I personally would love to reach out to some fellow YouTubers. I think it's been a long time since we've had a chance to have a wee hangout together. So uh, let me have a wee think about that. If you've got any suggestions yourself, you're welcome to feedback to me. In the meantime, I'd like to say thank you so much for your wonderful support tonight and an excellent um, turnout. Uh, from all of you. I'm loving this. 
I'm going to miss this, the, you all during the summer break. But there's still one more to go before then for patrons. Also, there'll be um, some kind of lock-in, potentially a Zoom lock-in, and uh, I'll keep in touch with you and Patreon for that. I want to thank everybody. There's a dram just come in from Charlie saying uh, she's bought me a dram saying to say slant you. Charlie, thank you so much. Wonderful to have you joining us tonight as well. Cheers. Thank you to everybody. I know that uh, my friend Tom Good is in. I love the wee tune, Tom. I, I, it puts me in the right frame of mind for the V-Pub, and I like to kind of wind down to it. I like that kind of lazy, lazy, syrupy rhythm that it has. Uh, thank you for uh, doing that for me all those months ago. I think it's changed the feel of the V-Pub for me, my friend. I look forward to welcoming you all uh, a week from now. In the meantime, thank you so much. You're all very, very dearly loved. And they uh, have a very, very nice week. Slanchova, everyone. Cheers. Mm -hmm.